Hey YouTube, what's up? Hello. This is just gonna be a Dave Raposa only stream. Unless Dan calls me. If Dan calls me, then I'll get Dan in this. But for right now, I'm just gonna start streaming some drawing things and, you know. I'm going to go live now. Alright. Hey everybody in the chat. Hello, if you're able to watch this. Uh, I know it's kind of a weird time. This is like a European time, right? This is, is this a good time for people in Europe? I think it is. I'm all confused because I used to live on the East Coast and then I moved over to uh, Colorado. So the time's all weird. So it's super hard for me to be on at a reasonable hour for everybody in Europe. I got to like wake up real early or start the stream earlier than I normally would or in, earlier than I would like to really <laughs> I feel like the stream is usually something I do towards like I don't know middle end of the day kind of thing after I've eaten lunch and stuff feels like that anyway hello hey John Silva all right I see you what up man Joda Julian Van Boo. yeah thanks for coming to hang out with me I'm going to shut off my image here and just start drawing around. Ugh. Here we go. I don't know what I'm doing today. I just needed to come on because I feel so happy. I'm so happy today. I can't even express it. We have the Steve Lichman books. They are at our distributor today and they'll be going into processing and then they'll be shipping. Yes, I'm so excited. I'm so happy. Everybody's finally gonna be able to read the book. My God, I feel like we've been waiting for this moment for so long and we just had so many little things happen that we weren't expecting. And finally it's, oh, finally it's gonna feel real. It's just that we've been working on these books for so long and it's just all I've wanted is somebody to read it and say whether or not they like it <laughs> and we've been like living in that uh that like I don't know endless loop of like is this good is this good who knows and now finally people get to get the thing in the mail and they'll be able to read it ah so exciting I can't even explain it it's been like however long now to process like man too long way too long but yeah we are we might get some curveballs thrown at us we're not entirely sure just yet but as far as we can tell it should be pretty much smooth sailing from here on out they have like a 24 hour to like 72 hour uh processing thing that they got to do for all the books but uh yeah, that's that's what we're waiting on now to just figure out what's going to happen. Like if they if they toss something at us, you know, it won't be a huge delay. It'll just be like a couple days. But the 72 hour thing, I think is for like massive projects that have tons of things going out. And we're not like, you know, the biggest production in the world. We have a lot of books, but it's not super crazy. You know, 7,000. Hopefully it won't take too long and then they can ship everything out. Everybody in the U.S., because they're shipping with uh, UPS, they should get their books within, like, three days of uh, going out. So I can't say this definitively because we have to talk to them, but it's looking like people should start getting their books in the next, like, 10 or 12 days. That's me trying to overestimate. I'm hoping it'll be sooner than that, but who knows. But yeah, we're just... Uh, putting everything together for them to ship it out. Got to put all the names into the Excel sheets and make sure that everybody has all their stuff. And we had some people updating their addresses like very last minute, which we weren't expecting. So we're letting them do that because we got to submit everything uh, tonight just to the, uh, the, just to Amazon and then have them process everything. But it's sounding like it's going to be smooth sailing. I am so excited. Uh, thanks to everybody in the chat. I appreciate the congrats. 
Yeah, the future book should be easier, Ty. Um, we definitely had this weird thing of like every time we thought the process was done and we were like going to be moving on, they would just give us something else to do. And it was like one thing after the other. And we had um, this whole deal where uh, the truck that was bringing all the books to the Amazon facility, like you, it gets shipped to Amazon and then Amazon breaks it up and then ships it to multiple fulfillment houses and then they ship them all around the world and all around the country in the US. And um, yeah, it's this whole thing. And, and basically if your shipper doesn't have everything like figured out with Amazon, then Amazon turns them away. <laughs> so it was like, oh, the logistics is crazy. But anyway, I'm gonna draw, I don't know. What should I draw? I guess I could draw like a, last time I did a chicken with breasts. What'll it be this time? Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Maybe just, I'll probably just do something from Steve. That'll be easy enough. Just something to zone out with, because I am just feeling pretty good. I want to ride it and just sit there. Let me do this. But if I see a, a better suggestion, suggestion in the chat, I'll take it. I don't care too much about what I'm drawing. And uh, the other thing is that I'm putting out my uh, marker and ink tutorial. It's basically like my traditional kind of like playing around with concepts approach. It's a lot of fun to do. I made a sped up version of the tutorial. The tutorial's like... The tutorial is like five hours five hours and something? I don't know. I have it set up on the screen. I can just show you. This is the um, speed thing I'm gonna put up when I actually put this out. This is, this is what I plan on putting up on YouTube. Here, you can watch it. sketch below that, right? Um, sorry if the music was too loud, I can't tell. <laughs> but, um, n not really. It's kind of like, um, if, okay, I'll do like an example of what the under sketch is like. It's kind of like, it's this kind of sketch. Like, I'll do this, and like this, and this, and it's basically like a doodle. Hello. <laughs> you guys can't hear me. I think my I think my AC turned on or something. Hold on. Let me go and shut it off. I think it cuts me off or something. Am I alive? 
five yet. Does it make sense now? Can you hear me? <laughs> Okay, well, anyway, for the sketch, music was a lot as hell. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Let me turn that down. Yeah, I ran it before. I was like, I know I'm going to do this. And I was just like, I was like, I definitely want to share what I'm doing, but... It didn't seem like it was super loud, but maybe it's because I'm quiet. Sorry about that. But anyway. This is what I do for like my under sketch. It's kind of just shapes. This one. So like, uh, as far as what was underneath that drawing. The, the inks, it was like something like this. Like basically I do little scribbles that kind of dive into it and I mean like dive into it. I don't know why I just said that. Scribbles that basically imply what it is and then from there I just dive into it with the inks and wing it. And uh, yeah, it was a lot of, it's a lot of like uh, improvising and I kind of just like use this approach because I want to maintain my energy when I'm drawing. And I find that when I use pencils to define everything before I do my inks, that everything feels a bit too stiff when I finally get into the process of inking with the brush. So I like to kind of give myself some freedom, uh, like as if I were sketching around. So that's how I use the brush. And I, yeah, I do it all with uh, the non-photo blue pencil. How do I come up with all that armor design right away? Uh, I pretty much just kind of have a idea in my head of what that stuff looks like because um, it's all things I'm interested in, like that kind of armor design is the kind of thing I like look at all the time, so it more or less comes naturally to me because I'm just so used to seeing it, and I've drawn things like that a lot, so I'm pulling from all that kind of like what do they call that? My, my inner library. <laughs> Everything that's stupid in my head. That's what I'm pulling from. But yeah, that tutorial, I'm going to try and put it out in the next couple days. I got to record a little bit of audio for it. Yesterday we had a huge um, hailstorm and I couldn't record anything. I recorded like 30 minutes and then all of a sudden my windows turned into like drums. It was so crazy sounding because I have like all windows in the other room and it just sounded like Doo -doo 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 -doo. I was like, all right, yeah, no, I can't. I can't do anything anymore. Yeah, no. I think I might visual library, yeah. I think I might start a YouTube channel called Art for Normal People, where I explain everything in plain terms. Because <laughs> I hate when people talk about artwork, and I hate having to, like, remember what people are saying when they talk about, like, libraries in their head. What do they call that? I can't remember what it is. What, like, when people say that, like, you got to build up that blah, blah, blah in your brain. I would love to just have a regular, plain super basic YouTube channel where I just explain things really normally and <laughs> plainly and call it art for normal people. <laughs> art for people who were embarrassed by pretentiousness. Dave, had, oh, this is from Dino Saur. Have you watched or followed or know Cynic's design? No, I don't. Any of the above. None of that. I don't know what it is. I don't really do anything, I guess, online. As far as, like, watch art stuff. It's kind of funny to think about. I haven't watched anything 
art related in forever. I just watch like funny stuff. I don't really care about art stuff that much anymore, which is weird because I used to absorb it all the time. But after I kind of started doing the Steve stuff with Dan, I was like, wait a second, none of this really matters that much. Like I like learning and I like improving for my own sake. But outside of that, I don't really care that much about anything else. <laughs> so I pretty much just vanish and, and do my own thing. I don't, I don't know. I just don't, like, it's weird. I can't pay attention to people who just talk. Like, people who talk about, like, nothing on when they're doing, you know, artwork stuff. Like, they're very serious about it. Like, I cannot handle it at all. Or when somebody's teaching me something and it's very plain, I, like, oh, my God. Like, my brain just vanishes. It's like, blah. It drives me nuts. And they sit there and they're like, and the next thing I'm going to do, and I really like this brush because, and it's like, for me personally, I listen to that and I want to die a thousand times. I just want to keep dying over and over. But, uh, let me tell you something. Downstairs, there is this little kid, not my kid, somebody else's kid. I live in an apartment, there's an apartment below me. And he plays video games so freaking loud and screams at the top of his lungs. I don't know if my mic is picking that up, but listen hard. Put on some put on some headphones and turn it up and see if you can hear the kid below me because he goes, oh my God. And he's like, you piece of shit. And like all that stuff like that. He's just screaming at these people on the other end of the thing. It's like, I, w I will strangle you. I will burn your body. I'll cut out your eyes. I will ruin you. I just want to eat his liver. I want to smash that kid to pieces. And he's down there all night. He, he literally screams for five hours straight. It's so insane. I could never do that stuff when I was a kid. I think he has a problem with his head. I don't know if that's like his whole thing, like that he's, he actually has like a serious issue. I don't know yet. But I've talked to the family they go, okay, we'll tell him. And then they go to tell him, and nothing changes. So I'm thinking that in the middle of the night, I'm just going to burn him alive. I'm just going to soak, soak that room in gasoline. Just burn it down. I mean, it'll, it'll burn me alive too, but it's worth it. Hell yeah. Let's get rid of him. <laughs> All right. Back to drawing spooky skulls. Back to drawing some spooky skulls. You know, at this point, this could be Ghost Rider, could be Steve, could be Skull and Shark, could be anything really. Could just be any old skeleton, could be whatever I want. You know what I mean? Somebody says weak parents. Ah, oh, yeah, this lady's the weakest. She's so freaking weak. She goes, Aiden, you should stop. Aiden, don't give a shit about you, woman. Aiden lives in his own world where he just plays Call of Duty. Aiden is a soldier and he's fighting other 13 year old soldiers. And that's all Aiden cares about. Fucking Aiden. So cool. I wish I was Aiden's friend. I wish I knew Aiden. He rules. That's like one of the reasons I could never play online games. Not that I ever had any desire to, really. But if I had to listen to those kids, oh boy. Can't even imagine. Just calling me a faggot and stuff over and over again. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. You love that Steve has ears. Yeah, I don't know. There's something about a skull without ears that I can't. I just don't like it. Is that weird? Who the hell is Aiden? He's the kid downstairs. He's like 12. And he's dead meat. Something's gonna happen to him. Mm -hmm. Alright. Let's focus on this cool, 
fucking cool skull drawing. <laughs> I don't really play video games in general. I play Tetris Attack. That's my game right now. You guys play Tetris Attack? You know you can get those like uh, SD card cartridges for Super Nintendo? Dan got me one of those. And those SD card uh, Super Nintendo cartridges it has every game ever on it. And you just plug it into your Super Nintendo, you can play it on the TV, and you just look through the library of games. It's like, are you serious? I love it. I love it so much. And we were playing Tetris Attack, uh, me and my girlfriend were just sitting on the couch. It's like, it's so freaking good. It's actually uh, my like second favorite kind of game like that. My favorite game that isn't Tetris Attack, but it's just like it, is Pokemon Puzzle League. Anybody else play that game, Ren64? I mean, Pokemon is the, it's just there for the name alone. Who cares? You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't mean anything. It just says Pokemon Puzzle League, but nobody gives a shit that it says Pokemon. I mean, maybe people do. But it's just Tetris Attack, and it's the greatest thing ever. If you play it like... I'm going to draw a picture of it so you get an idea. Imagine Tetris, or Tetris Attack if you've ever played it, in a cylinder, right? And there's blocks here, and they wrap around the back, right? It's so good like this and there's a bunch of squares I know I'm doing a really good job of drawing this don't judge me and like there's heart shapes and like other lucky charm shapes and basically you have this selector thing like this and you switch the shapes to line up with other heart shapes in threes and then that gets rid of this row boom and then stuff is falling down on this side of the cylinder and in the background here. So you're constantly rotating this cylinder and destroying this whole cup of blocks. It's so good. I just want to say, if you want to play it, you know, go in and play it. It's pretty cool. Anyway. Nayut says, you are too freaking old for me, Dave. Hey, it's just the way it goes, man. There's older people in the world. <laughs> Tons of them. I'll be dead soon, though. That's just Candy Crush. You're wrong. It's Tetris Attack. Candy Crush is garbage. So you guys can't hear that downstairs, right? You can't hear that kid screaming? Man, I really want you to be able to hear it. Just feel it. <laughs> Yesterday was a hailstorm. Today it's Aiden. Draw yourself as Steve. <laughs> like just me in a robe. I mean, I guess I could give him a hat. Thirty five is the average death age in the twelve hundreds. I mean, we could change that. You can't hear a dog. You can hear Aiden. There is no dog. There is absolutely no dog. You are hearing Aiden. If that's what you think is happening, you're wrong. I wish Aiden was a dog. If Aiden was a dog, I could euthanize him. Unfortunately, he's like a 13 year old boy, so we're limited. I don't really want to kill Aiden, if that's what you're wondering. It's just frustrating because I can't record stuff a lot of times because all I hear is this stupid voice. 
And no matter how many times I tell the parents, I gotta wait for the dad to come home because then he goes down there and he goes, Aiden! And then he just, <laughs> he just unplugs the system and I just die laughing. <laughs> Fucking kills me. We had this other neighbor not, not that long ago. His name was Brian. And Brian was cool as shit because Brian would blast classic rock music and get shit-faced. And it was so funny because there'd be like, you know, that song like uh, by Rush, Tom Sawyer. <laughs> and he'd be downstairs shit-faced just singing along with it. And he couldn't even, I don't know. He couldn't remember the words, he was offbeat. He was everything you want from a drunk person listening to Rush all night. It was awesome. I never complained once about that guy because I enjoyed it every time he got drunk and blasted music. I just sat there in the living room and laughed. It's like, yes, dude, yes. Sing that Rush song, sing that Journey song. Just keep going. Uh, I just realized that Steve was looking pretty mean instead of sad. What's that? He can't look mean. He has to look innocent. Has to look innocent. So I used to do grayscale, and if you got my other tutorial, the Bogwitch one, part two, I kind of stopped doing that approach. I do, uh, well, I do that sometimes still. If I'm working for... A client and like they need something right away then I will just nail something down and do it in grayscale and just put colors on it for concepts because I'll constantly need to change the colors and things like that uh, but in terms of like my straight painting stuff goes I've just been doing like flat colors so I'll I'll draw Steve and I'll show you in a second what that looks like it's kind of the approach if you watch the the bird one, the chicken with breasts from the other day. It's kind of the same thing as that. I mean, not kind of. It is that. <laughs> if you're watching that. <clears throat> John Silva says, I heard screeching, thought it was an animal, but in the end, Aiden is an animal. Truth. That is so true. Uh, Jank Lloyd to ass. Got some tips for making a custom portfolio to land one specific job, like what else to do other than what they have already. Um, I would take whatever they have. Like, okay, so if you know kind of the job you're going for. I would look at the job and go like, what can I do that's like a new perspective on the same thing? So like you take their concepts and stuff, like you take, let's say you're doing Halo, you take the Halo art aesthetic and the designs they already have and you do whatever you think would be an improvement or something new with them that you always wanted to see. If it's something you're interested in, then you always just want to take it and do your interpretation of it and add whatever improvements you think could exist or add whatever you know new design elements you think would be cool anything like that um, just kind of like understand what you're applying to if you know it and you're a fan of it then it's easier uh, and I would say that it's all about kind of just I mean innovating is the wrong word because it sounds stupid but just improving on it in a way that you understand like that you know would be cool something you've always wanted to see that nobody does. Don't just do like, I'm going to do that, but I'm gonna make it better rendered. You know, like you can do that, but it's not as impactful as actually bringing some new ideas to it. So if you're aiming at a place you wanna work for, just bring your interpretation to it. And that's usually all you need to do for the most part. It's just kind of put it through your lens and if they like it, if it's cool, if it's something new, then you'll probably go somewhere with it. Oh, cool. What am I doing? All right. Dan's here. Hi, Dan. Hey, Dan. You want to come on here or are you too sleepy 
All right. <clears throat> Dinosaur asks, how long did it take for you to make a living off of just art? Uh, took me a while. I mean, I was, I mean, I, I kind of lived at my level for a while. Like, I was constantly, like, um, moving up, I felt like. So, I lived in New Hampshire for a little while, and my rent there was, like, 400, or, like, 600 bucks or something like that a month, or maybe less. And I was able to kind of just live there and do commissions for like people on just like through PayPal I was able to live that way for a while and then I kind of just um, consistently gave myself new challenges so whenever it became a little too easy I mean not like easy but like I could survive I would then um, take on something else I'd be like okay we're gonna move to Boston and we're gonna live in a more expensive apartment and then at that point, I'd be like, okay, no, so now I have to make a certain amount more, and that would kind of motivate me to push beyond uh, what I had. I also used to do all kinds of weird illegal stuff. I used to, like, forge bank statements so that I could get better apartments and things and be like, look, this is how much money I make, and they'd be like, I totally believe you. You can definitely live here, and I was lying because I definitely didn't have that money, but I wanted the motivation from fear <laughs> to force myself to get better work and to try harder. And, um, yeah, I just did that over and over again and kind of just pushed myself to just make more money and get better. And, you know, like whenever I would get in that situation, I'd be like, oh my God, I literally cannot make this much money unless I'm a better artist. So I need to study even more. And it was just a real kind of motivation instead of me just forcing it on myself. I, I'm not saying that you should do that. That, that might just be me. That's just like, kind of what helps me to stay motivated but yeah I mean it's just it's an option it's something that like you know the worst case scenario is that you run out of money and you're like homeless for a little bit but that's not so bad you know worse things can happen if you have family and things you can fall back on that but like I don't know I don't know you do all kinds of crazy things just to get better and, and improve I mean, it's whatever. Do do anything you you can to live your dream. Um, it for, but to live comfortably doing art, it took me about four or five years, I'd say, something like that. Like five years when it was comfortable. When I wasn't like, nah, maybe more than that. It might it might be like six or seven years. Yeah, six or seven years. That might be like how long it actually took me to get to a level where I was feeling like, yeah, this is working. I am going to bring Dan on now. There we go. Here's Dan. I'll call him in and hopefully you'll be able to hear him. <clears throat> Hello. You there? I'm here. Keep talking. Hello, 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 hello. Check, 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 check. Checking levels, checking levels, checking levels. Hello. My name is Dan. I'm talking to Dave. It's been a great, it's been a great time. We're gonna have a lot of fun. Hello, hello. Hey. Hello. Well, I live down the street, and my name is David. I don't have a particularly large penis, but I'd like to believe that it's sizable. Girth is optional. Can you keep talking, Dan? I'm trying to do the levels. <laughs> Hi, my name is Dan. I have an extremely okay, great Bob penis. Bob. Length could, you know, leave something to be desired. I got two ghosts in my attic. Great time. Go up there, sit in a rocking chair, look at the ghosts. Cool. All right. Yeah, that sounds good. All right, cool. Hey, Dan's here. So, hello. Hello. <clears throat> um... In today's news... Hold Axel on, Rose sent a DCMA whatever to Google, telling Google to remove photos of him that look fat. Well, he is fat, so that's what he gets. I didn't know you could do that. You can. You, I did the not right, know. Do you remember that article about the right to be forgotten? I thought that was just a suggestion. I didn't know it was a thing that actually got approved. I mean, that's a version of it, so it must be, uh -huh. at least to some extent, it exists. I want to be forgotten so bad. All right. Uh... 
Max Smith says, I lived in my car for a while when I got my first art job. That's the way to do it. I mean, I'm being serious. That is the way to do it. It's just yeah. to do it by any means necessary. If it's sure. something you want to do, you know. You got to, yeah. I mean, and yes, fear is a great motivator. I heard some of what you were saying, and then because of the gap, I didn't hear the last, like, 30 seconds or whatever, so... I was just saying that it took me a long time to get into this. It took me yeah. like seven years to be comfortable in any way. It took me off at New Hampshire and fake bank statements. Yes. It's but, just that I'm so far beyond, you know, punishment by law at this point that I feel like talking <laughs> about all of my my felonies and things. Uh, all your lovely coats. A criminal at heart. Yeah. Now my yeah. dad was a criminal, so... Dave's dad was it criminal's the wrong word. What's uh what's the word for it? Con man. Yeah, it was like a like scam artist or I don't know. He was always scamming. Had great stuff. Yeah. <laughs> scheming Pappy. Yeah, schemes. He always had schemes. Schemes and scams. He was innovative. Not in like a bad way, like nicest guy ever, just no, always he was the best. Scamming and scamming. Hmm. So yeah, let's see. He's what dead now. We... He was a uh, part of the Mars mission. Yeah. And his space space cradle blew up. He died on the outer ring of Phobos. No, he died of a heart attack. Is Phobos on Mars moon? <laughs> ah. He died of a Tetris attack. Hey, did you find it hard to learn storytelling as an additional skill, and do you think you are at a good place with it, and care to elaborate a bit on that side of the comics? I'm going to repeat this question, lol. Well, thank you for threatening to repeat it <laughs> very quickly. Uh, what, what was the question? Hey, did you find it hard to learn storytelling as an additional skill, and do you think you are at a good pace, uh, place with it? And care to elaborate a bit on that side of comics. So, did we find it hard to learn storytelling as an additional skill? And do you think you're at a good place with it? Um, uh, well, let's talk about what that is specifically. If we're talking about specifically the uh, specifically, if we're talking about like writing, but I yeah. don't think that's what they're talking about. Well, there's like there's like narrative storytelling, then there's the script and the writing, and then there, you know, it's like an illustration tells a story. A comic book page is a series of illustrations that tell a longer story. The script is writing the story. So, I'm well, gonna guess he's talking about panels. I think he's talking about panels. The whole thing yeah. is that, uh, for me, when I was drawing the stuff, I think mostly about like page composition and pacing because I know that that's just jokes, so it's all about timing. So everything is the kind of distance between panels and then the shots. So like, you know, there's obvious ones where like if somebody says something really stupid and you have a reaction shot that nothing's being said, then it's kind of like a dead air kind of feeling. There's no background elements drawn. There's nothing. It's just kind of like dead and right. flat a flat angle on the face, just the eyes reacting. Like, you have to kind of uh, have an idea of what all the shots look like. Um, and in one thing in, like, timing. the beginning... Yeah, one thing we did in the beginning a lot was thinking about what would this look like if it was animated and try to, like, envision that and then go, okay, so those are the beats. Like, this is where the camera would change. This is where we'd have a shot of this guy. This is where we'd have to show something to set it up for later, like... You start thinking about it in terms of what it would look like animated or like filmed or something. You start like thinking, oh, okay, so this yeah. this has to be here. Set but up. like in the script, yeah, this is like in the script when we're like writing the whole thing out, and there'll be like notes in it that say like there's a thing here, and mm -hmm. this happens. Like yeah, that's I'll do mostly I'll type out, like establishing stuff. Like you know, Steve turns and sees this in a description, and then you know the camera cuts to this and. You know, writing it yeah. that way helps figure it out on the page. Yeah, I mean, you pretty much... Everything is on the script. It's like... Uh, obviously, like, the acting parts are, like, important, but, like, the script informs all of that, and then it's just how would... And then it's really personal. It's like, how would you react? So for, like, a lot of the... I mean, me and Dan, we're pretty much on the same page with everything. 
Right. So it's like we're kind of like, you know, in everything that we like, like movies we like, scenes we like, you know, like how we would react to stuff, we're pretty similar. So when we're doing it, it's like us reacting so it's pretty much like acting it out like when you're doing the script like when i'm drawing the thumbnails and stuff like i'm just thinking like what would i do if i were these people and that's pretty much it Hmm. let's see did you tell everyone what happened last night before we continue yeah that was what i opened with (laughs) okay that's why i woke up working i woke up yeah i woke up super late today because I was up all night just stressing like crazy because the books got to Amazon ahead of schedule, which is awesome. But then I called Amazon and they didn't have the drop off on file. So I thought I got lied to again. And then I was just up all night trying to figure out what the truth was. Yep. Figured it out though. It just, oh boy. Uh, let's see. I'm glad you didn't disclose this familial history of scamming in your Kickstarter. That's a good point. Yeah. Dave, uh, why do you mirror the image sometimes? Uh, Just to look at it with, you know, they, again, with the whole thing, I was talking about doing a a YouTube channel called Art for Normal People, where I describe things in plain terms. Yeah. yeah. Which I might do. I might do that. But... plain, Plain air becomes painting outside and... Yeah. Yeah. Plain air, otherwise known as in Painting the woods. Outside. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think that'd actually be really appreciated. We've talked about like Yeah, how much we hate that stuff. Taking art off the pedestal and like yeah. just letting it be a thing and talking about it in a normal way. I think that'd be a good idea. So, um So what were we talking about? Oh, flipping the image. Yeah. yeah. So you flip the image so that you can kind of see it again because if you look at something for too long you don't really see the flaws anymore and right. after you've been drawing for a while it's nice to kind of like refresh on what's actually on the piece so when you flip it it's like a literally a new perspective on it you just can like see it again and you go oh okay i can see what's wrong with it um you know like the eyes are off or like the you know the proportions are wrong or something like it really does help a lot in that regard where it's like you're looking at a new image all of a sudden because if you flip it and you go like, but it looks bad that way, that's how everybody else sees it. Yeah, you gotta the keep thing that is, is, like, everybody's right-handed or left-handed, so, like, when you draw, you don't see it, because, like, I'm left-handed, so I see things, you know, with my strength. Which Danny's is, my is the left side of his brain. Exactly. Well, when you draw stuff <laughs> with the left or right hand, it's, it's skewed a tiny bit, no matter what, towards that direction, because of just the natural way the brain and the hands works. So when you flip it, you see it the opposite way and you're like, oh, I did make the eyes wrong. I did make the head a little too big. The arm is kind of not really working. Like things that you kind of don't notice show up because you're not looking at it the way you naturally skew the drawing. I think um, Mike has it right in the chat. He said, I believe the official art term for flipping the image is Oculus Reverso. Oh yeah, that's a Harry Potter spell. Harry Potter spell. Yeah, yeah, Harry Potter spell. <laughs> That's what they say to see back in time. Uh, uh, somebody asked, um, who does the bulk of the writing, or is it totally collaborative? It's totally collaborative. It's literally a conversation. That's how we do every script. Is yeah. we, we're both, both we're, we're every character. Me and Dan are both characters. And what we do is we'll, we'll do the, the kind of like idea we're going for, and then we'll try and beat each other's lines over and over again, just improvising on the phone. Right. And that's pretty much it. Like, we're the same characters, and we just go line, like, character by character. We'll go, oh, and then he should react, and he should say something like this. And then I'll say right. a line, and then Dan will go, and then he'll just say another line, and then I'll say another line until we find something we like, and then Dan will type it down. Right. Or one of us, so that happens a lot, is we'll go, what's the right way to say this? And then we'll back and forth it hundreds of times, saying it different ways till we find the one that works, like boiling it down. Yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty much the whole process. Right. It's the uh, most fun thing ever. Yeah, yeah, I love it. It's totally collaborative. It's uh, One of us will have an idea for something we want to do, and then we'll talk it out and figure out, number one, if it's worth doing. Number two, what the right way to do it is. And number three, like, just kind of... 
the more the more conversation you can have about it, the more ideas you'll get out of it, and then you can kind of like choose the ones that are funnier and get rid of the ones that aren't. Yeah, sometimes it's better to kind of like go somewhere and talk, and then like yeah, come back with all of the ideas sitting in your head, and then start improvising from that point once you've kind of figured it out. Yeah, like if you're gonna do a one-page script, come up with five pages of material and pare it down to the best stuff. Yeah, like, that's every script. Yeah. How far back do we go? Uh, I think I was, what, 14 and you were 13? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Can we have a drunken storyboard? I mean, if I if you stay up late enough, I'll get drunk. What does a drunken I mean, storyboard tonight. mean? If, uh, I don't know, I draw something, I could do a rough cat. Oh, yeah, that's a good, that's a good thing to draw on drunk. Yeah, rough cat is my drunk story. Where I just say anything I'm thinking. Let's see. Shouldn't it be art for idiots or idiots guide to art? No, because we want to take all the humor out of it and all the cleverness out of it and just say art for normal people. We want there to be no spark there at all. And just have it be the flattest, most direct thing ever. Yep. Art for normal people. Here's a question from Dinosaur. Have you guys thought of animating Steve and pitching it to Adult Swim? Uh, we'd love to. I mean, yeah, I mean, we're, we've, I, I don't know how much I want to talk about. Like, we've had people approach us that want to, like, turn it into stuff. Yeah. And um, they want to, like, option it and, you know, like, show it to people and, you know, get stuff made. But... We, you know, it's still early. The book isn't, people that bought the book don't even have it yet. And, like, I personally hate it when people get some money on, like, Patreon or Kickstarter and then they sell the thing to, like, you know, another company before the people that backed it even get it. That always yeah. makes me, that always makes me feel weird. It's like, like, Mighty Number no. 9 is a good example if anyone's familiar with all the stuff that happened to that. Like, it's got a TV show, It's it's been sold, like, an option, and every possible thing that could be milked out of it's been milked out of it. And the people that bought the game, like, years ago don't even have it yet. Right. And it's like, they're the only reason you're here, and they're the only reason you have an IP that matters, so why wouldn't you take care of them first and not, like... Yeah, this respect place? the people that actually helped you do it in the first place. Yeah, like, we have like uh, we have in, like this agency that's kind of that wants to do it, and you know, like I'm, we won't go into like crazy detail, but like they really want to do it, and we are just kind of like, we keep telling them like we want to make sure that we have all of our ducks in a row, everything's done, kind of thing. You know, like you don't want to dive into something like that when you're in the middle of doing something because once you're doing like a TV show, you're done pretty much, like. <laughs> Unless you have, like, a dedicated team, because the thing about Steve is that it's not, like, good in and of itself. It's right. the only reason it's anything is because it's just how me and Dan talk to each other. And if it's not me and Dan working on it, it's going to be a different show. And right. we need to be able to dedicate ourselves to it. And whenever they, like, come to us and they're like, oh, these people want to do something with it. What do you think? It's like, well, we... Keep telling you we can't. <laughs> like, yeah. But yeah. the the whole thing is that when you as soon as you get kind of like somebody involved in your IP, and it's like this big agency, it's like they they do all of this kind of like coming at you thing over and over again of like they want you to sell really bad. It's a Hollywood agency. They, that's what yeah. they're supposed. That's what they're supposed to do. I mean, like yeah. I get it. That's their job, literally. But like, it's just when we when we say no, they don't they don't trust that we mean no, and they try to find new angles for us to say yes. And like that's funny to me, and I like that they do it. And you know, good on them for for being that persistent. It's admirable, but it's like we'll do it when we want to do it. Like we got to get the second book out, and make sure the people that bought it get it, and like. We're really like, me and Dave's whole approach to everything is that if we would hate something happening to us, we will never do it to the audience. Yeah, like the, the whole thing is like, they can't believe that, like, they can't believe that people don't just want money. Yeah. And it's really weird to them when you just go, I don't want the money right now. The horrible thing that I wish we could talk about, but we really can't, is when they tell you who's interested. Oh, and that you, was, and you can't do it. 
that was I felt like they looked at my Facebook feed to find out what comedians I liked and I was just like why would you call me and tell me this I hate you yeah it's like we just got done telling you that we can't do it and they go well guess who's interested in your property your favorite people in the world <laughs> you like, go ah! you can't do anything what, what was the first thing I said to them on that phone call didn't I say this was the most painful thing you ever could have done to me yeah, it was. It felt I said, insulting. Hey, I appreciate the effort, but I want you to know this is the most painful thing you ever could have done to me. Yeah, if we could, uh, if we could, like the reason we can't talk about it is because they're actually looking for a property to do. Yeah, and they're still looking. I think so. Dan, have you it. ever been summoned for jury duty? Yes, and I was gotten rid of because they chose all the fat people and told them to leave. <laughs> There's some, something about a weight loss doctor thing. Awesome. So I sat there for four hours, and then they summoned us in, and then the jury, the uh, the lawyers came up and chose all the people that were even slightly overweight and kicked them out. I just sat in a room for a really long time, and it's not, then they just told me to leave. That's the thing. Uh, love that name so hard. It, I mean, yeah, technically it is manipulative, but it's literally like anything else. It's like if a landlord had an apartment they thought someone was interested in, and they're like, oh, you know, it has this feature and this, and you know, we'll fix this for you. Like, it, That's what everyone does. It's not It's not just them. People, once they, they think they have you on the hook or they think they can get you on the hook, they're going to make the deal as sweet as possible because they want to make the deal. Like, it's just a hard sell. Yeah, it's a hard sell. It's like, you know. It's like anything else with a salesman who just really wants to get the deal mid. But it's crazy just like, I so want to be able to talk about it, but like, I know what, we're what really they gonna... what they did was just like, like they brought on, um, it was a really famous comedian and then like really famous Hollywood actor people and then a really famous producer and they were like, they gave us all of this pressure and it just like, it's so crazy how many times you get kind of tested like mm -hmm. over and over and you and it's so important that you say no to a lot of things like no is definitely the most important thing because if you like the thing is with something like Steve we don't have leverage on like anything right we're not we're not popular. established yeah we're not established yet we so six you know six thousand backers or whatever is great for us because we're it's just the two of us and that's amazing and it's like you know yeah. world change for us to hollywood that's nothing yeah so it's like when if we for instance sell our stuff and we're on a show unless we have some kind of reputation we will not have very much control over the process and they're going to take the reins and it'll be a different show we can't just like I mean, like, as nice as it sounds to do those things, I've seen it so many times where it's just, like, people kind of just let things get away from them. It's like what George R. R. Martin talks about when he says, like, how all authors are, like, they all hate their movies that get made. Right. It's because they just don't have power. You know, they sell it, they don't understand what it is, and then they let it go. It's like, I've worked on movies and stuff, and it's like, I understand how like the producers talk and all that it's like I've been in that situation not with my own thing but like just the hierarchy of it and like how they treat other people like I was on a movie where the director was just like getting tossed around and by the producers like they didn't care at all and um I like talked to the director directly and they they like really got mad at him for that for like asking me to do something and it's just like, it's really crazy just how it actually works. So until we have some form of like leverage or something, like we have the ability to ask for things, don't want to just like go ahead and, you know, let people have their way with it. Yeah, plus like, if there's going to be a thing ever made of this or any other stuff that we do, I'd love, I'd, I'd want to take the time to like be part of the team and know the people doing it and know yeah. that they're like going to do the right thing with it and like, I want to actually like know them and be a part of it. I don't want to just like, you know, get rid of a thing, offload yeah. it. That's like, I will wait four years for a new season of the Venture Brothers because I know when it comes out, it's going to be exactly what those two want it to be, and it's going to be the funniest thing I've seen in years. Like, yeah. 
they can take as long as they need to. I'm perfectly fine with it. But that's the that's what makes that show and so many other animated shows so different is that like they will take as long as they have to to make sure it's exactly what they want it to be. And other stuff just has to have a new season. Yep. Same thing with like South Park and Yeah. All that. It's like they're they were low budget when they started and they were like able to get away with a lot cuz they were on like a lesser network you know comedy central wasn't really anything well, i really respect started. what i really respect what they're doing now walking away from it a little bit and saying oh you know we're going to do shorter seasons and we're going to be you know we'll do them when we can and when we want to and we're not going to cover every topic because like they're just not interested in the show anymore and like i really respect them being able to say that when it's worth as much money as it is because like their interests are starting to change a little bit away from tv and like Book of Mormon was the greatest thing I've ever seen. So, like, I fully want them to do whatever they're going to do. Yeah, Book of Mormon was amazing. Yeah. And I haven't played the game yet, but everything I've heard says the game is, like, funnier than many of the seasons of the show. So, like, you know, if they're interested in new stuff, I want them to do the new stuff. But so far, that's that's kind of, like, our experience with the whole show thing. We'll see where it goes someday. <laughs> and yeah, that is kind of an Adult Swim sort of thing. They have shows that are more regular on there, but then they have other shows that are just like, you know, Space Ghost or whatever, where people can kind of just do whatever they want. So they've got both. Yeah, I would so rather take a huge hit on money and have control. Yeah. Than like just give it up. I never saw the pilot of Rick and Morty, so I don't know if it changed. I can't really comment on that. So, Jank Lloyd, I don't know how to say your name, Jan Cloyd, <laughs> or Jank uh... Lloyd. Um, Follow up portfolio question. Is it even advisable to make an out into the blue portfolio or should everything in it be targeted at specific jobs and how would you guys do it? Um, I mean, you, I mean, you, can, you can do whatever you want, really. Yeah. You can have multiple portfolios. You can have a portfolio that's on your website that's more like your personal stuff and stuff that you're into and stuff that you'd want to do ideally. And then you can have portfolios that you send to art directors that are targeted to those specific art directors. Like, you don't have to have just one portfolio. When you submit for a job, you can choose very meticulously what you're going to submit and create new pieces for the submittal. But for your general portfolio, you can kind of just, you know, put in the stuff that you actually like into that one. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to target it at stuff, target it at things that you like and you understand. Because if you don't understand the properties that you're targeting, then it's going to show. Uh, so you'd have a better chance of appealing to everybody with a portfolio that targeted one group as long as you actually know what you're doing and you look like you enjoy it. Uh, it'll still appeal to more than just that one group as opposed to like targeting something you don't wholly understand because you think it's the right thing to do, which can be kind of bad. Right. It looks forced is what I'm saying if you do that. Yeah. I mean, there's there's really there's so many ways to go about it. Like, there's some people who just pretend they have the job already, and they do nothing but work for that company, like you know, Riot or Blizzard or something. And then eventually, they'll usually get work with them at some point. You can do that too. Um, if you, it depends on like, can you afford to float for a while until you get the job you're waiting to get, or do you need to do freelance in the meantime? And like, there's there's so many factors that go into it. <clears throat> you guys can ask questions about anything by the way I mean they don't care yeah so I am doing this and I just like I don't know today it was such a relief to like wake up to oh I know right I don't you know if you felt too. that way yeah the fact that in 45 minutes Amazon will have all the books yeah it's like it's it, real oh, it's amazing and we still have to see what other things come from it, but for now, it just feels so good. We got past that hurdle, and now if there's another hurdle coming, we don't know what it is yet, so it's okay. But, like, 
the one we were looking at is gone. So we're we're feeling pretty good. Yeah, the whole thing of like China missing their boat coming over to bring the books. That means the books are gonna ship ahead of schedule too, because they're actually gonna start leaving maybe tomorrow. No way, they're actually gonna put them out. Well, I thought says, they had a processing fee and then like another process. No, no. The thing is that once the books are there, it takes 24 to 72 hours for the books to show up as stock. And once they show up as stock, we can start shipping them. Oh, shit. Okay. So cool. the books might be stock as early as tomorrow, which means that people might get them by Saturday. Holy crap. Some people in the U.S. that are close to Indianapolis will probably get them by the weekend if they show if they show up as stock tomorrow. If they take the full 72 hours and they show up on Friday, people won't get them till next week as a Sunday. But since we only have 7,000 books, I'm assuming they're probably, you know, for Amazon, that's a small number. So I'm assuming they're going to show up before Friday. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. I mean, worst case scenario, my original number still stands like 10, 12 days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People overseas, it's going to be a while longer just because, you know, I'm sure you guys are used to that. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit longer. But, hey, at least it's happening, you know? It is actually happening, and I can feel good. It's like, oh, my God. Uh, here's a good question. How did you get your best jobs before? Contacts, internet, social media events. Best job I ever had in art. Uh, I just got from knowing a person who was part of the old, you know, like Daggers version two, who just had too much work and said, hey, I think you'd really enjoy this job. Do you want to do it? And I said, yeah. And then I started doing it. And um, it's like my favorite job now. What job is that? Uh, miniatures. Oh, right. Working on tabletop miniatures for this company called Mears. It's like my absolute favorite freelance gig I've ever had. Um. I can just like do it. It's really automatic. It's really quick. Um, yeah, I don't know. I really like that job. They're really good to work with, and they're usually really fun. What was the question exactly? Oh, where did you get the best like art job? I'm trying to find it. Best Let's like period. Out. How did you get your best jobs before? Contacts, internet, social media, events. My best job, um, as far as like a job job goes, was advertising. I really enjoy like everything about it like I know people like advertising is soulless but illustration in and of itself is advertising yeah for the most part but like um I really liked it because it was like I got to do all these different styles and I got to work on composition a lot and like and I just got to I don't know I got to get all over the place because it's mostly about generating ideas so it was like I had this freedom all of a sudden to do whatever just to get things, you know, just to get my idea across to the people I was working with. And um, that was that had a ton of freedom to it. I got that job because I did the Ninja Turtles stuff and it was like, you know, the realistic portraits of the Ninja Turtles. And that spread all over the internet and people saw it and they were like, oh, can you do this thing for us? You know, like it's a, uh, you know, it's... Um, Pacific Rim maybe or something like that one of those movies they were like can you draw some monsters for us on our movie posters and then from that point um, I just started working on all that stuff and it eventually moved over into me being able to actually design posters and yeah it's my favorite kind of work like if I ever have a need to like you know if I ever need to like make money or whatever like I always reach out to them when I'm available like when we're not working on Steve like in the middle of the books I'll be like I need some work do you guys have anything and within like a couple of weeks they have something because you know the nature of advertising is those companies are always producing content so that's by far my favorite job um hey guys what would you suggest for people who want to get good at writing comics and books in English and not their na and they're not native speakers uh, I think the easiest thing you could do is just like have a friend who speaks English fluently that you can like look at the scripts with or have them proofread it or talk it out. I wouldn't say go as far as like hire an editor because the relationship of hiring somebody and paying them to do something is way different than having just like a natural friendship with somebody. They feel obligated to please you because you're paying them. So like, you know, 
make a friend who speaks English fluently. I'm sure if you're like in the comics or our community, you probably know, know people already. And just, you know, when you come up with a script, send it to them and say, hey, does anything read weird? Does it, does this sound okay? And like, you know, just be willing to take the feedback because even little things, um, just tiny little like syntax things sometimes don't quite work. And it's, it's usually things that people would never even think of. I'd also say like, if you're interested in writing, like, period, to join groups online specifically focused on writing and not mm. art and just be somebody, you know, like, explain your situation and say, like, in, like, the forums or whatever of a community like that and just say, like, I'm interested in doing short stories. I'm, you know, I'm foreign. I don't really, I'm not, like, super fluent in English. I don't know if, how my writing's going to come across. And I say, like, could you guys help me proofread some of this stuff? Like, I'm sure that there's people who do that a lot who wouldn't yeah. just be in this industry that you could go to and like talk to the people yeah. that are actually like helpful. John Silva asks, I got to ask, is someone in the background snoring or is it just me? That's Wiko. She's sleeping and having beautiful dreams. She's oh, okay. a little puppy. A, I shut my fan off because I thought it was that. If it's not, my fan will turn it back on. No, it's, it's Wiko. She's in the background. Super humid here. No uh, did you, Dan, did you ever get paid with an original sculpt while working with that miniature company? I think I remember you talking about it on a live stream once. Uh, it's been offered. I never took them up on it. Um, a lot of companies that create custom things will offer to do trades instead of, you know, just giving you cash if you need something. Like, I've worked with a lot of Kickstarters, and I know that if I, if I want something that they make or I want a version of my thing and they're able to make it, they're more than willing to, to do that as a trade it's the same thing to them paying me or like you know making a thing and you know it depends on the company some people are willing to do it some aren't but um yeah i've definitely been offered that i just haven't taken them up on it yet uh raymond minar asks do you think it's better to just start with smaller stories and test the water first or should i go all in and do the whole thing in one go i would say like keep a blog and do yeah. short stories like every week well, I mean, just like, to get like used to it our book started as a story that was just a one-off thing like the first steve comic was, it was never intended to be a book we just did a small thing and people liked it and we did another one and we kept having more ideas and let it grow naturally I think the worst thing you can do is go into any creative thing and think that you have to have every possible thing figured out before you start. Yeah. That'll kill you faster than anything because the pressure of that will mean that you never even begin. So just do it for fun and um, wait to see what clicks naturally. You don't need to know exactly what it's going to be going in. You can let it kind of define itself. Yeah, like I've written, like I wrote like a 80 page like Starvale script or something like that. And I'm not going to use it. Like I'm just, I just wrote it and like, you know, going to probably like adapt it into something else or just use it as a rough draft for another one. It's like you should just get used to like just writing. Like, because whatever you make the first time, it's not going to be perfect. But it's like, don't expect it to be either. And don't like hate yourself for it not being like the greatest thing ever. It's like, just, just have fun. And, you know, in the same way you do art, it's like you fail all the time. Nothing's going to be perfect. You just have to keep rolling with it and see where it goes, you know? Right. And, you know, you'll get better as you do it naturally. It's like things that you naturally enjoy, you end up being good at them without really trying to be good at them. It's just because you do it all the time. It's something you would do anyway. It's like, just treat it as something fun that you, you don't take too seriously and, over time you'll kind of get used to it like one of the reasons that i think that um uh like well let me rephrase that one of the things i think helped me improve um writing in some sense is uh keeping the blog and just writing about stuff that happened to me and just trying to like constantly trying to talk in my normal voice and i think that that led to like feeling more confident like when we do steve scripts where it's just like, don't try to be anything you're not. Like, just start talking like you have, like, your voice and what you're doing. And um, just get used to, like, coming up with ideas like that. Just writing straight through, like, stream of consciousness about your own life. And, like, get comfortable kind of keeping something like that. Where you, you write long form or whatever. You do, like, a couple page entries in your blog. It should be good. At least it'll be, like, a nice start. 
Dave, do you still use references when you are designing characters? Not really. Only if I have any kind of issue in, um, like, rendering something or whatever. But no, I don't do that anymore. This one's good because it's a yes and a no. It's, uh, Dave, are you able to tell anyone in the industry to cast John Hamm as Cable? The concept art piece he did was cool. So this is the cool thing about that is that technically, no, Dave can't call someone up and say, do this, but we're living in a cool time where if you make a meme that's popular enough, real things can happen as a result. Yeah. So, like, Rob Liefeld shared that and was like, John Hamm, that'd be amazing. Like, you know, the guy who made the character. So it's like, if you make a meme that's popular enough that it gets seen by those people, then real things can come from that, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it's really awesome. Like, you don't necessarily, like, have the direct, you know, whatever influence over it. But, like, I worked on the, the new Ninja Turtles movie, and, like, I got onto that because I did that Ninja Turtles artwork I did forever ago. And it's, like, in that same way, it's, like, I wanted the Ninja Turtles to kind of look like that and, like, Bebop and Rocksteady and all that. And it's, like, and I got to actually work on it and like do my version of them and it's like um you know it's like back and forth with everybody and all the other artists and it's like that's really cool that you can have that kind of influence it's like all you need to do is put your idea out into the world and people they either like it or they don't and maybe they hire you maybe they don't maybe they use the idea maybe not who knows but like you still have an impact and i think that's really cool because it's not just like with jobs you know it's with like anything as long as people as long as the right people see it somehow you have the potential of actually doing something did you ever see yourself being an art director i found myself directing and giving feedback a bit more at work and it's a bit of a weird transition i still paint half the time though so it's okay well um I mean, I like art directing. I've done that for jobs before. Well, they'll bring me on to like manage a couple other people and get a thing done. I think it's really fun to do team stuff like that. I don't do it all the time, but um, yeah, I think it's I think it's fun. Yeah, I think I have a problem where like I, I always want, like, control on stuff, and I would like to do art directing, but. I don't know. I just have an issue with like things not being yeah that good. It's more. It's less about it's less about the person art directing, and it's more about what team you're given. Because like, you can be given a team that does not want to work with you and does not want to work with each other. And if you're the art director, everyone's going to assume that it's your fault. Or you could be given a team that's great and everybody likes working together and it's super fun. And then art directing is the greatest thing in the world. Yeah, so like I've worked on of, projects with people, and like it seems like the only thing they're interested in is being done with it, and it's like yeah. they don't have any real interest in actually doing a good job. Like they don't yeah. care. It's like the fastest product possible. Let's just pump this out and move on to the next thing, and it's like you sit there, and you know, in the same way that we talk about Steve and how like we want to do it right, it's like I have that same feeling going into like every job where I'm a part of like a team or something. It's like how are we not all super into this like how are we not all into like making this the best that it can be in terms of like satisfying the people that have always wanted to see these things like in everything in video games and movies and all that and it's like a lot of the times it just feels so frustrating like they're just phoning it in and you just kind of like i don't know it's like the team is so important but it's also hard to motivate people who kind of like Maybe they're jaded or something, or they just do it too much. I don't know. But right. it's a weird balance. Like, I would like to be an art director, but then I keep thinking, like, maybe I would rather just, like, do what we do. You know, just keep making comics and have control that way where we can make the thing we want and oh, I'd rather work just as too. hard as we want. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to take a job at a company where I'm art directing other stuff. I've just done it in the past as a freelance thing. And it's, you know, it's been fun, but it's not like I wouldn't do it as a career. Yeah. Well, actually, if you just um, go to stevelichman.com, you can check out the comic. The, well, the someone, whole previews on there. Uh, someone in the chat called Dead Air, who I think left because I couldn't, I couldn't message him, um, was asking where he could read the comic. So I just pasted it in the, uh, in the chat, but I think they took off. 
Oh, okay. Um. I'm a big fan of you guys, and I just wanted to ask: Do you guys prefer savagely sexy, savagely sexy potatoes or crumply kinky pistachios? I mean, I'm a potato man. Uh, do I have to choose from one of those? Damn. I mean, um, you can stuff a potato with pistachios. I don't know. Potatoes are in my blood, man. I'm an almond Stashies man. Pistachios are great, but... I'm all about the, the almonds. Yeah, I know. So, almond, I know that wasn't an option, option, but... Hmm. Are you excited at all for E3? I am, yeah. Um, because after last year, just the idea that more stuff like that could happen that's unexpected, it makes me happy. There's no way. There's not enough well, that's stuff what we, for that that's to what we said. Again. That's what we said last year. No, that's not what I said last year. Nobody thought Shenmue and Final Fantasy. No, but I'm saying that that's what I'm. There, there's not going to be that again. They, they can't do that again. They can't bring out Final Fantasy Seven. It won't again. be. It won't be that big if they try to do something like that again. But there's other IPs they could bring back. If they did, and for the first time. Streets of Rage 2D again somehow. Yeah, Sprite based they, Streets of Rage. It's actually exactly. good. <laughs> I'm excited to see if Zelda's gonna suck. I really want it to be good, but I I'm kind of worried that it's not gonna be great based on like stuff I've been reading about it. Uh, I really want to see it though. I'm excited to see it no matter what. Um, really want to see Dragon Quest 11. Like, that little tech demo they showed last year was just, like, beautiful. Like, the running around in the field, I was like, this looks amazing. Yeah, that looks pretty good, actually. Yeah, I'm excited to see that. Um, I'm assuming there's going to be more Last Guardian, which is coming out soon. So, like, I, of course I want to see that. Everything that studio does is really good. Is it, though? Uh, Shadow of the Colossus was, yeah. No, I'm it's saying, amazing. like, is it coming out? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe not. I yeah. wouldn't be surprised if it came out this weekend and they just said, and it's out now. Cause, I like, know, that's the cool new thing to do. Yeah, I wouldn't be just surprised drop if it. just dropped it. So, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for E3. There's going to be some, some stuff I want to see. And I'm really pumped to see if there's any new stuff with that like VR table. That was my favorite thing last year. Mm. Right. Where like you're cool. looking at Minecraft or I think it was Minecraft like on a table in 3D like I want to see what people can do with with that that was I like that way more than VR. Basically, you just want the table from Star Wars. Yeah, exactly. Just want to play chess where they fight. <laughs> Is that so hard? Can we have that? Oh, uh, let's see. That's a good answer. Somebody said, what the fuck, Dave has a great announcer voice? Ever thought about it? Me and Dan both do announcer voices. We do. It's true. Can you do your announcer voice? Do the Steve Lichman narrator voice. Um, I need to... Answer a question. No, I have to read the scripts. But Dan... Continued Dracula, speaking a bit louder and turning as he spoke so that the gathering crowd of cool college aged kids might hear him. Yep. Yeah. It just takes effort. <laughs> That's the narrator from the Steve book. You go, hello, how are you today? <laughs> like, you have to, like. <laughs> uh... Dragon Strike, a man scorpion. A man scorpion walks into the room. Feeling brave tonight? Hmm? <laughs> if anyone doesn't know what Dragon Strike is, it's a D&D, like, board game that came out in the 90s that has an instructional video for Dungeon Masters that came with it. You can watch it on YouTube. Greatest thing ever. The guy they hire to be the Dungeon Master who just, like, wears a black turtleneck against a black backdrop is the greatest. The greatest thing. Really Feeling brave good. tonight, adventurers. Oh, uh, let's see. Questions. Uh, I've come to the recent realization, being a creative, sensitive person, do you find that it is quite important to be around creative, motivated people? 
for me, it's really easy to not be creative or productive if I'm around people that bring out. For me, it's really easy to not be creative or productive if I'm around people that bring out those traits. Recently, it seems to be paramount in my ability to produce. The way that's worded, I can't tell if you're saying you want to be around creative motivated people or if you don't want to be around He's creative saying motivated saying he wants to be. Okay. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it's, it's the not, the easy to not be, but, but people, anyway, yeah. People who drain you in general suck. Like, not that, not that it's, like, bad to be, uh, you know, negative. Like, I, I'm negative all the time. But, like, yeah, I mean, if somebody's, like, literally bringing you down, like, I don't, I don't know anybody who can, who likes that. <laughs> right. Like, people who are just like, I don't want to do anything today. Yeah, it's terrible. Like, like, yeah, I couldn't do that. I'd, I'd die. I mean, but I don't really... Cynical people don't bother me. That's the weird thing is, like, I like I like hanging out with creative people, but I don't like, like, working around them. Like, I like, I like going out to, like, a bar and hanging out with people and talking about stuff with them. But, like, I'd never want to, like, go to, like, a, a, a group thing where you're at someone's house and everybody's got their sketchbooks. Like, yeah, I don't know. I cannot do that. I, I, do I that. never understood that. Like, I have... Like, I, I he talk you hear like, about that stuff, and it's like, nah, like, I, how do you, like, are we at a bar right now, and you're sketching a goblin? Can you not sketch a goblin? We're at a bar. I yeah. want to get drunk. I want to talk. Do it at home. Yeah. Keep, do it at home. We're in the real Keep that world. garbage at home. Yeah. You want to show me your mecca? Ooh. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> that's where, yeah, that's where I draw the line. I can't. Uh, I love hanging out with those kinds of people and talking to them about the stuff they're doing, and it's a good time. But I, I can't go out in public and paint with people and draw with people. I just never. I can never get into it. I think what we're talking about is that we just like hanging out with people. Yeah, exactly. Like it's, it has nothing to do with art. It's just that if we're hanging out with people, they're just cool people. Period. Doesn't matter if they yeah. do art or anything. Like I don't like. I've never been that the person that can like targets like specific groups. Like I only hang out with other artists. Like I need to be around other artists. I just need to be around people who are having a good time. You know, like I, yeah, need, I need to, to be, be around, around people, people that, who like being alive. I gotta be around people that have like an energy. I don't, I don't care if they're making a game, making a comic, making artwork, making, you know, just whatever. If they're in a band, I don't, I don't care. Just like they have to have that. Like I'm doing something. You know, it, that they are more fun to hang out with the people that aren't doing anything. But I don't want to, like, only talk about that constantly. I never understand that. People that are like, let's let's all go out to this society of illustrators and get dinner after and only talk about art. And it's Yeah, like, no. that's the crazy thing to me, too. It's like, don't it's like only it. talking about baseball. Like, I don't only want to talk about baseball. Like, yeah. We all thing. talk about art. We all talk about art with each other online all the time. When we're gonna get together in New York and actually hang out, can we please just be human beings? Yeah, like it. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm not trying to just like hate on people, but like I don't like the kind of like stereotypical thing of like, whenever I, uh, like a lot of times this happens. I don't know. Maybe like one out of every five times, it's like there'll be nothing else to talk about. And it's really weird to me because, like, yeah. sometimes you feel like it's kind of forcing a subject or something like the. I mean, it's like with a lot of different things where you, you feel like the only reason you are even with this person is because you both do the same thing. Like, not that you're, like, really good friends or anything. It's just that, like, you both live in the same industry. It's like going out for drinks with people that you work with. Like, it's like when you're not necessarily like best friends, but it's like you do the same thing. When I was a kid, my parents would have Christmas parties, and they'd invite their like employees and people that they worked with and business partners and stuff over. And the thing I never understood is that they'd talk about business at a Christmas party at our house. They'd stand in the living room and be drinking and eating food and talking about shipping rates of epoxy. And I'd be like, what? Talk it? It's, a, it's your break from that. Do, do anything. I get that same feeling. I don't know. It's not as extreme as when I was a kid, but I do get that feeling where I'm like, how are you? How are you the human? I don't care about like good good for your art stuff, but like can we can we be more than than that? 
I think John's in the chat. John Severin. What's up? John came over, and we just drank wine, and we hung out in my living room, and got drunk, and just talked about stuff. Exactly. I that's my favorite. That. Just doing nothing, just hanging out and talking. But that's when it doesn't matter. It's like, who cares if you're an artist? Like, it doesn't matter. Me and John met artists. up in New York. We went we went to the society, saw the stuff, and then we left and we didn't talk about art for the rest of the night. We went we got delicious food, had some beer, woke up the next day, had some brunch, good time. Another well, thing that sucks about that kind of stuff sometimes is that like the they talk in tears and I've never understood that. I always gravitate towards people that like don't care that much. I like yeah. like I always gravitate towards like if I'm out of place, I'll talk to people who are like I don't know, like, just, they don't care about that kind of thing. They don't care about, like, tears. Like, certain yeah, artists will talk only to other big-name professional artists, and it's like, wow, like, what crazy world is this? Yeah, like, I don't know. The first time I ever went to a massive black workshop, there was a group of people that were watching Koro do a thing and talking about how they wish they could talk to him. Yeah, and I re- I remember that I'm always going to remember that they paid thousands of dollars to fly to California, go to this event, get a hotel, to meet the people at the event and learn, and then they were so overwhelmed with like the fandom of the person that they wouldn't talk to them, even though they were there in the room with them, and the whole point of it was to talk to them. Like that, I think, is really destructive to people's like you know growth as an artist, education, growth as a person, even is like. They're just people. And, like, I, I never understand people that can't talk to people like they're people. Like, that tier-based thing Dave was just talking about. Like, they're just people. Like, just don't don't treat them like celebrities. They're not celebrities. They're, they're human beings. It's fine. And when you treat like, people like celebrities, they start to believe it. Yeah, or they get weirded out. There's two kinds of reactions to that. They start to yeah. believe they're celebrities, and they become bad people, and they become weirdly disconnected from their audience because they think they're better. Or they see you treating them as a celebrity and they go, ew, I hate that. Don't. Yeah. It can be like, it can be, it can be embarrassing or it can be weird. Like the other way where they're like, I know I'm cool. Yeah. I mean, the best people are like the ones that are super humble who don't care, you know? And those people are the ones I always feel like, like what, I, I don't know, like when they just talk about normal stuff and they're just human beings and they, it's like they don't even... It doesn't matter that they do anything. Like one of my favorite people is Carl Kapinski. Like meeting Carl and hanging out with him, I was like, "You are like the coolest, most normal dude. Like he's so nice, humble. He's funny. Like if you ever have a chance, go hang out with with Carl Kapinski. Cool dude. If you see him at a workshop or something, say hello. Uh, sleep with him. Whatever you want. Yeah, yeah, definitely." I think my first time I ever met Carl, I I got to the hotel in California for an event, and I clicked on the elevator and waited for the door. And then the elevator door opened up, and it was drunk Dave, drunk Carl, and drunk Stefan. And Carl just said, oh, it's you, and gave me a hug and touched my cheek. <laughs> I went, this is the perfect way to meet this man. Handsome, handsome man. Uh, I want to, if we miss questions, just repost them. I'm sorry, guys. The chat's starting to go a little quicker. Um, yeah, I wanted to ask, how do you deal with toxic people who are your friend? And what if you need to work with them on the same project you like, but you don't want to leave the project because, well, I mean, I I don't think I'm friends with any toxic people. Well, you don't really deal with them. I mean, like, I, in my whole life, I've never dealt with people like that. I just talk to them. If you're going to describe them as toxic, then why are they your friend? Yeah, exactly. Like, they're not your friend. It's like, so if somebody's bothering you, like, I do this horribly awkward thing where I confront people about it, and it never works out. (laughs) Yeah. Where I go, why do you do that? Like, why are you, like, mean to people? And they're like, what, dude, why are you doing this right now? (laughs) Like, I don't know. I'm sorry, but, like, this is just... (laughs) They can't live in that kind of moment. It's too awkward. <laughs> I love when the voice drops and they, they talk like their parents are watching. Yeah. Don't do this to me right now. <laughs> Let it go. Let it I can't go. help it. <laughs> mm. Yeah, just don't hang out with toxic people. Don't 
it's like if people are bothering you it's like bullies or anything else in life it's like just don't let them push you around like don't let anybody push you around yeah let's see more questions yeah it's weird I used to do that a lot I mean just to be honest with you guys like for a long time I was like yeah I mean he sucks but we're friends and I never like it never clicked like why am I friends with these people well why I used to I... think that like because we were part of the world yeah that we needed to like force ourselves to like it yeah it was really strange to just be like Oh, you know, they're horrible, but I mean, we're friends, and it's like, why are we friends? What? Yeah, not that you shouldn't, like, tolerate people. Like, no, tolerate Obviously, people. that's good. Yeah. Not you everybody's going to be like you. <laughs> yeah, tolerate and be patient with people, definitely. But, like, I do know that people are friends with people they hate because they think they have to be friends with them. Yeah, it's really weird. It's like, don't do that. Like, it's, it's such very... a very clicky high school -y kind of stuff yeah. whenever you experience that do we have examples of freelance work from when we were just starting out uh, we have some we don't have the really early stuff because we had it all saved to an AOL server which has since been d gone deleted like all of our really really early stuff was on that server and it's all gone hold on a second Kristen Dave should take his own advice with the Aiden kid no, you know what? Fuck that Aiden kid. That Aiden kid can burn in hell. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I already talked about him earlier. He's the kid that lives below us, who's 13 years old, and he fights all day on Call of Duty and screams at the screen. That kid, that kid can go die. Yeah, that kid sucks. I went out and stayed with Dave a couple months ago, and I couldn't believe how loud that kid was. Yeah, uh-uh. All the rules go up with that kid. I don't tolerate him. No. No way. <laughs> just pure violence <laughs> that's all I want okay Mr. Puma Pants says guys how do you deal with toxic waste I have all this toxic waste <laughs> I have all this waste and it's toxic you put it in a landfill near a residential neighborhood and you hope for the best with a superhero you go like this okay is there a solid hole in the woods there you out go. behind your place do you know of any hole just out oh, in a field, a field with a hole in it. Quality and you hole. spill it into that hole. You fill the hole with the waste. Yep. You're always filling holes with waste. That's so what you gotta do with it. People get some mutations going. If it's toxic, mm, it's just the what it, it's just what it is. It's that's the kind of waste that it is. So you gotta get rid of it because it's gonna hurt you. Uh let's see. How did the idea of this comic come to be? Uh, I was drawing a lich and I hated it. And uh, me and Dave started talking because whenever we hate jobs, we always talk to each other about why we hate them. Yeah. And I was talking about like what a liches even do. And we just started talking about how funny it was that monsters and dungeons just wait to be killed and they never leave the dungeon. They're just down there waiting for someone to kill them and take their stuff. And then we started making comics about it. Yeah, that was the thrust of it, though. It's just like, oh yeah, what if, what if we made a comic about just like how lame that life must be, mm -hmm. and then it evolved into like, wouldn't it be funny if it weren't just D and D monsters? Like, what if it were like literally Dracula lived down there too? Like, wouldn't that be stupid? And then that became its own thing, and it just kept mm -hmm. on going. Just kept going, on Ghost Cop and Fat yeah. Chicken and. Goes up. What about people who are amazing to you but horrible to others? Well, I mean, it depends on who the others are. I mean, that's on a case-to-case -case basis. I know people that are a lot less like tolerant of people they don't like than we try to be at like public things, but they're super nice to their friends, and like I can't, I can't blame them for the way they act. Like I don't, I don't hold that against them. Yeah, that's like a case-to-case -case thing. Yeah, I mean, what are you gonna do? You can't yeah. stop people. From I'm not doing gonna pull someone aside and go like, "Don't treat people the way you think they they should be treated." Don't I be mean, yourself. If you want our advice, we kind of like just started doing Steve and like 
um, without realizing it, because we were doing Steve, we had to like walk away from all of that kind of thing, like just the community aspects of concept art. And right. it was really refreshing for us just to kind of have a new perspective on like why we do things and, you know, like think about like how small that world is and like, you know, how we all like, yeah, I mean, a lot of people hold it up on like a pedestal and say like, it's this amazing thing. And just walking away from it and doing something like Steve really like made us realize just how small it was and how like, you know, we're nowhere near where we want to be. And if we hope to do something, like we just have to do it for ourselves. And when we did that, it's like we worked, we worked really hard and just like made a book and that was our own thing. And we were like, oh, okay, none of that other stuff's real, really. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, it can, it's as real as you want it to be. And it's like, and you don't have to just be a part of it, you know, like doing Steve, we're able to do our own thing and just exist in our own little like bubble and have fun that's the best part about doing it is that like it's just us and like mm. like what's the critique for it you know like there's nothing like that like it's not based on skill or nothing it's just based on like well, no, how hard we want to work and whatever every panel should look like the painting you're doing right now and the fact that we haven't committed to making it look that good means oh shit you're right we're not making we're, any cash we gotta make hack. that cash we're hack frauds hey dan how much <laughs> How much money would you pay me to turn the whole book into a realistic one? Because I will do that in a heartbeat. Call Marvel Comics. I want them on the line. I am a money man. I need six digits or I just leave. You know how to make the jokes even funnier? Is that if everything was photo real. That would be hilarious. It would be so funny. What the fuck? That's so realistic. I'm so impressed with... I was so impressed with your skills that I laughed out loud. I couldn't you stop know, it laughing. Just disappoints me. It just disappoints me being a fan of your work for so long, Dave, to see you taking the easy way out with this cartoony kids comic when you're capable of dark, true fantasy. My, my favorite part about realistic panels is because there's so much detail that you sit on them for a little too long looking at all the details, and then when that happens, the pacing is perfect. I can't see the pores in his skin. It's not done yet. Hmm. Truth. All right. Anyway. What's the next one? <laughs> <laughs> the amount of hate messages we got in the beginning because the comic didn't look photoreal is still fucking hilarious to me there's only one style we just got triggered yeah trigger warning <laughs> should we put a trigger warning in the beginning of the audiobook I was wondering about that <laughs> exactly like a little siren Warning. Do you remember when we were kids, they had those those trucks with the alarms that would go, warning, step away from the vehicle. Mm -hmm. What was that? Who had that idea? It's who called said, RoboCop. Was like, yeah, who was like, you know what, it's 1992. Let's just jump into RoboCop world. Let's make know. trucks that talk to people. Don't know. Hmm. And this doodle is off the chain. Remember in Ren and Stimpy when they would do those disgusting close-up shots that were highly rendered? And SpongeBob also did that a bit. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing is that's just the juxtaposition. It's the whole show the looks contrast. shitty. And then for emphasis, you have the one perfectly painted, still shot, high detail thing, usually with a woman screaming in the background going, ah! Awesome. My favorite yeah. parts of Ren and Stimpy. Me too. Do we have any tips to draw arms better? I mean, you gotta study them arms. Yeah, just start flexing in the mirror. I mean, I know that's a real simple answer, but like, it's, it's the honest answer. It's like, you gotta look at arms and draw arms. Yeah. Alright, let's dive into this. Let's dive into this. Hi, Dan and Dave. You used to look through your old sketchbook at deleted link. Sad to see that the images are gone. What is that, concept art? Probably. Are the, are the images gone? I don't know. Maybe. 
We haven't visited that in years. I'm not going to keep that photo bucket paid. I ain't oh, crazy. Oh, right, right. Question to both Dan and Dave. Do you guys dislike your own artwork when looking at it, even after doing it for so long? I've been having issues with my own artwork. Motivations feel discouraged with shoes. So, so, uh, Everybody feels that way. Or at I least mean, I know, most people. I know, we, I know we do. I can't say everybody. There's some people that hang their own work in their studios. Yeah, but they're nuts. Um, well, I mean, they're like, they're Mike Buckus. Okay. They're alive Is it? It's it depends on what it is. If it's like some big traditional piece, if you're printing your stuff out and you're a digital artist and you hang yeah. it on your wall, it's pretty crazy. But if you're not doing that, then yeah, I don't know. I think everybody looks at their artwork and they go like, "Oh, that could be better. This could be better." Like people definitely feel the same way. I know I do. It's like when I do things. I mean, if you have desire to be something that you're you know not quite yet like there's some skill level you want to get to then you have an idea of like what you know level you're at and you're able to kind of look at your own thing and go well I know it's not that yet so it's disappointing but the thing of that is that you know everybody goes through those phases it's not like unique to you I mean, the only thing that separates you from everybody else who kept going is just that you know you you saw the problems, you looked at them, you went, ah, this isn't the best I could do. And then you just kind of go back at it and, you know, keep working and trying to get better. You just keep yeah. on pushing through those moments because they're just going to keep happening over and over. I mean, there's two sides to that question, uh, Isolor. It's like, yeah, when I'm done with something, I usually never look at it again. I go on to the next thing, and I just because I don't, I don't like looking at my own stuff. Like it's like, yeah, I did that, and it's done, and you know, on to the next thing. But the other part of what you asked is like, I feel so discouraged and shitty when looking at the stuff I do. It's so frustrating. I just feel like I'm so far away from where I want to be, and I'm just not happy with what I do. Yeah, use that as like something to push you to to get past that and then when you look back at the old work that wasn't as good you can like feel good about like oh you know I, I did get better like you know I have learned more since then like I don't like looking at work I've done recently but I like looking at old work occasionally from years ago because I can go oh you know what I did get better at that I did get over that particular hurdle like it's it's good to do that sometimes just so you can confirm that like yeah I am learning I'm not wasting my time yeah, and even if it makes you feel good to hear people, like, talk about this stuff and say, like, hey, you know, like, this is what you do and you're not alone kind of thing and all that, it's like, it might feel all right to kind of get some confirmation about that, but at the end of the day, you feel this way because it's like you still need to make moves. You still need to be doing stuff. Like, sure. if this is, like, you know, I, I had this thing a lot when I was um, doing the dagger stuff with everybody where people would message me all the time and say this stuff and I would do the same kind of thing we're doing now where I would just like talk about it and whatever and then like a week later they would give me the same thing and it was just like don't let yourself do that like just sit there and be like okay it is what it is this is what it is I feel this way it's normal and it's up to me to change it and then just go after it and change it it's like if you're making moves you'll feel better you know just an hour a day if that's all you can do it might feel like incremental steps it might feel like you're going nowhere but over the course of time you'll be infinitely closer to where you want to be than if you just you know talked about it worried about it you know like let yourself be held back because you weren't exactly where you wanted right now like nobody arrives right at the place they want to be in are you know when they start out even like the first couple of years it's just going to be this long, tedious process. And it's the reason why not a lot of people do it. It's, you know, it's hard to do. It takes a while. You got to be super committed. But the payoff is nuts. You get to, you know, make things. <laughs> you get to make what's right. in your head real. And, and it feels awesome. You just have to keep that in mind that it will work out. If you're dedicated to it and you try, you're going to work. It's going to work out. You're going to be able to do it. But yeah. it's up to you. You know, it's not up to us or anybody else that can help you. Like, they, like we can only do so much. Everybody, communities can only do so much. At the end of the day, it's on you to just, like, just dive into it. That's going to make the difference. And Thomas, I'm not referencing RoboCup as a memory. 
there actually were trucks in the 90s that had that alarm that actually had that voice that said that it's true it's 100 percent true they would go warning step away from the vehicle then it would go whoop whoop then it would say three two one yeah and then the guns would come out and they'd shoot you to pieces well no it would do the countdown and then it would say notifying police like it no you aren't it's 1992 but trucks still had that for some reason yeah like we grew up in like this little nothing town in massachusetts and trucks actually had that alarm i would hear them down the street like they were so stupidly loud i think it's It's funny it's funny to think that there was ever a time when that was like you know what we're ready for trucks that yell at people i'm ready right now bring them back where'd they go yeah, I want those trucks. Let's see. Um, at what point is a painting loose versus unfinished? I mean, that depends on you as an artist and what your work is. Like that, that answer is different for everybody. Yeah, it's like here's the thing about realism stuff. Like, if that's what you're talking about, like you can be very loose and very realistic. It's like you can be, you know, uh, super well rendered, like very, very detailed and have it look realistic. It's just a balance throughout the piece and you have to maintain that. And like, it all depends on what you're going for, the style, the feeling, you know, what you like, you know, everything's going to change. I mean, it's, it's a good thing to definitely like learn realism and then kind of like devolve it you know, like cartoonists who understand anatomy and animators who understand anatomy are going to be able to exaggerate it better. And, you know, it's good to have that skill set. But like, yeah, I don't know, like the difference between those things, it's kind of like, yeah, it's up to every artist to kind of like find that. Like you can be as realistic and loose and sketchy as you want and it'll still look just as good as like a highly rendered, polished piece. Hey, Dave and Dan, what do you think is the value of redoing old pieces? So updating versus taking down old pieces so people don't see your old bad work. Mm. Uh, mm. I don't think there's any value in redoing old pieces for the sole purpose of taking down the old ones so people don't see bad work. I think do a new piece that's better than that one and take down the old one. So, you know, I don't I don't get I, I do get the thing where people go, it's been 10 years, I'm going to repaint something I did 10 years ago and put them side by side so I can see how much better I got. I see the point in that. That's like a fun thing to do and share on Facebook and stuff, sure. Um, if you're talking about like, I, I can't have anything on the internet that doesn't look professional, I got to redo everything and like delete the old stuff so I look as good as possible, I think that's not a great idea. and I think it's going to stress you out a lot. Yeah, I mean, if you want to do that, like, go for it. But uh, for like the actual value it has, I don't think it matters too much. It's like people have this weird idea that like, I mean, it's not weird. It's like we all think everybody's kind of looking at us all the time. Like that's just like the nature of people. It's like when you're self-conscious about something, it's like you think it matters, but usually people don't care. And it's like the whole thing of that is that as much as you think people see it and notice it, you know, like, they don't really like that that kind of thing it's like it doesn't really matter to anybody but you you know like they'll see the work that gets shared around that is your best and the other stuff if it's not up to par or whatever it'll just kind of go away you know unless it is really popular and you're like I don't like this being shared around anymore that's a different story but you know like let's say you did something that you think is like kind of offensive or like immature when you were you know, starting out and it's everywhere on the internet. I think stuff like that is okay to get rid of. Oh yeah. Yeah. In that specific example, definitely. But like, as far as skill goes, I don't think it matters because that stuff just won't be seen anyway, unless you're like shining a light on it. Well, that's like, I understand people who look back at their old work and think it's funny because they've grown as artists. I don't understand people that look back at their old work and are ashamed because I've met both. And, like, I don't get people that look at their old work and they go, they're, like, actually upset by, like, oh, I fucking sucked. Like, yeah, it's like of course why, you why, do you, why do you care? Like, why does that mean anything to you? Yeah, like, yeah, everybody sucks when they start out. Yeah. 
Did Carver have a major crime problem that warranted those alarms? Uh, Carver had and still has a lot of crime, which is weird. A lot of just like people robbing stuff and selling it for drugs. Yeah, lots of drug crime. Yeah, the one thing about redoing old stuff is that like a lot of like not just your skill level is going to be bad in the old ones. Chances are you didn't have a super solid grasp on composition or design yeah. or anything like that. So I don't see the value in it just from that standpoint. It seems more like something that's like fun to do rather than something that has really any purpose. It's like a Facebook thing. That's like, you know, people started doing it on concept art forever ago, but like that that whole repaint a piece from 10 years ago and put it side by side really right. started getting huge with Facebook. Uh, I don't know if I've seen that. That was like a that was one of those many things like I'm going to say this in a way that sounds like I hate it. I don't hate it. I just think it's trendy and whatever. That's like part of the whole Facebook like look how good I am thing. Like I am better than I was or like you know, here's my study. It only took 20 minutes and it's, well, it's like the it's the new version of um the old concept art thing where they go I'm 15 years old. Like they have to tell yeah. you how old they are before they post. <laughs> Everybody wants to be Miles. Yeah, like please don't judge me that. based on my age. After Miles showed up on CA back in the day, there was this huge wave of people that were competing to see who could be the most impressive at the youngest age. Yeah, that's funny. And I, I always felt bad about that because, like, Miles wasn't one of those people, but tons of people got weirdly egoistic about it after he showed up and were like, well, I'm only 14. I'm yeah, 16. I mean, well, Miles jokes about it now. I mean, like, what are you going to do? Oh, You're 15. It's like, of course you don't want to be judged. Right. It's like that's just you know that's what it's like being that age yeah there was there's a whole wave of things on like facebook where people do like the humble brag art thing where it's like you know this only took this long or like like how much better i've gotten or yeah we do live in a weird time where there's like this distinction between like quality and likes where it's like yeah. where like you can't really distinguish between the two anymore or like people are kind of just doing things for the kind of exposure of it and it doesn't One, really lead anywhere as far as like, you know, like you, if you, it's probably not going to lead to any kind of work. Like art directors aren't, you know, like browsing that stuff. <laughs> right. It's just other artists, really. All I could, uh, I saw one the other day that like killed me. It, it had a, it had a tag on it that I've never seen before. That was just, it made me like want to take a bath. <laughs> just felt, just felt gross. It was like, uh, it was like realism something else and then the last one was not 3d or like yes not 3d oh i was like oh fuck you like <laughs> you're <laughs> so into ego your, stuff you're, you're so into your painting like yeah not it's not a 3d i know you think it's a 3d model it's not like no. guess what guys i am the best <laughs> yeah i don't know that stuff makes me feel gross where it's like when they type it in a way where you know that they just like they they feel so good about it it's just like sucking it up yeah congratulations you did something that looks like a 3d render how much time you should have just used a 3d program then like what are you like what are you doing or just don't say anything like don't who don't cares? Brag, like yeah that's great but don't brag about it no brag about it come on all right what am i talking about yeah you idiot facebook Facebook, it's all about the like, Stan. That's true, it's all about the like game. Yeah, what's your like game? What are your stats? Did you download any Google Analytics lately to tell you? Would we be interested in doing a podcast or interview with the ArtCore group? Uh, send me a thing on Facebook, we can talk about that, maybe. Uh, yeah, I don't know what that is. Yeah, you know, I don't know what that is either. We're super busy lately, so we probably haven't seen it if you've been posting stuff around because we're trying to get the book out. Um, we might have to wait till the books are done shipping to do a talk, but yeah, we I'd be happy to talk to you about maybe setting something up. Just um, yeah, message me on uh, Facebook. Can we talk about something real quick? All right. Go ahead, man. You see this thing? Can I teach it? This is my uh, this is my technique for rendering stuff. If anybody's curious, I mentioned this in the tutorial that I'm putting out, but. Think of forms like this, all right? Grab an orange, grab something in your house, whatever. Draw a Sharpie line on it like that. And then just turn it in your hand and watch it, you know, go like that and then like that. 
and whatever as it goes around. Have a light source, maybe hold it next to a lamp or something so it's hitting the uh, point, and then just rotate it. And as these lines curve around, that's how you got to think of all your forms, and you render like that with brushes and stuff, like you render around those turning forms. And that is just a simplified way of thinking about it. Because I know that people like overcomplicate the process a lot of the time. But I would just suggest that you do it like that. It's how I'm doing this right now. Where like you see on this part here, I'll select something dark, I'll do a line like that. I'll select the color that I just did that line with and I'll blend away from it. And look at that, it looks like a form. And that's really all it is. That's this whole technique. There I call go. it doodling, doodling with shapes. Diddling shapes. Diddling shapes. <laughs> you guys really opened my eyes with these streams because I think I've been forcing myself to like a lot of stuff in the concept art field and stuff. And now I'm really thinking about what I love to do, but I'm still not sure what will come out of that and how it will be marketable. Anyways, thanks, guys. Yeah, we all kind of do that. Me and Dave have done that in the past, too, where, like, you feel like you have to like things in the community you're in because everybody else likes them, and, like, it wouldn't be a trend if it wasn't popular, so it's like, I have to like steampunk, I have to like post-apocalypse, I have to like zombies, like, I have to like this rendering style because everyone's doing it, I have to like League of Legends because it's League of Legends, you know, everybody wants to work there, like, there's so many things people just think they have to like because it's popular in the in the community and they think that like you know they can't be part of it if they don't like it and like you'll get to a point everybody does i think where you start to realize that that's all kind of bullshit and it's like you can just do your thing and like the stuff you like and not everything has to be liked by everybody and yeah trends are going to keep existing but if you generally don't like something and you feel like you're forcing yourself to do it stop doing it yeah, I mean, you'll stand out more if you don't do it. Like, if you do something that everybody else is kind of, like, ignoring, you'll be cool. <laughs> like, you'll stand out. Just do things that you like naturally, things that you would want to do on your own. I know it's, like, hard to always get back to that place, because it was definitely, not like was, it is, for me. It's like I'm constantly trying to, like, get back to what I actually enjoy, Right. Instead of doing like the thing that everybody does, it's like it's easy to just see what everybody's doing and just kind of fall in line with that. But it also helps to like just kind of think back to things that you enjoy, specifically you, stuff you grew up with, whatever that you want to see real or you know, some kind of style. Like, let's say you like the kind of artwork that's on action figure boxes or something like that on packaging, and you're just like, oh, what if I do things like that? than that kind of style it's like then you can be you know the person doing that kind of thing or you know that isn't necessarily like the super hyper real or whatever that everybody else is kind of following it's just so many options and there's so much space too you don't need to fall into any one of those kind of uh, categories if you don't want to Will we ever have something like critique days on this stream? Uh, they won't be critique days, but I'm definitely going to bring back doing paint overs and portfolio reviews. I'm just waiting for the books to kind of, the initial wave of shipping of our book to be done so I can actually like focus on doing it right because uh, I'm just every every hour, I'm like basically checking Amazon to make sure nothing's gone wrong right now. So yeah, yeah. those are going to be coming back sometime this month. Has anyone mentioned blood sports yet? No, nobody has. You are the first. I'm about to pee my pants, so go I'm going to mute my mic. Talk to you. Talk to don't, mute, don't mute it. Let them hear you. They can't hear me. I'm going to be in the other room. All right. I can always hear it. All right. I like fantasy, but I feel like I need to learn how to design sci-fi. Otherwise, I'm putting myself in a box. I mean... You don't need to, you don't have to know sci-fi. That's like people that say, I love drawing, but I can never get a job unless I learn 3D. And it's like, yeah, you can. You don't have to know 3D. I know so many people that assume they have to know how to do 3D to get a job as a 2D artist. And it's like, what are you talking about? 
Some companies maybe might want you to be able to do both, but there's so many jobs for 2D artists that don't require you using 3D. Like, these are all just assumptions people hear because people say them on the internet. They don't really know what they're talking about. And again, take that with a grain of salt because people aren't, some people aren't going to like the advice me and Dave give, and that's fine. You know, we're not anything special. We're fully, fully fine to believe we're totally full of shit. It's totally cool. But you don't need to learn styles that you don't like. Like, I'm not going to learn post apocalyptic design. There's probably plenty of jobs that require that, but that's not something I enjoy inherently. I like it when other people do it. I like looking at Marco Derjevic's use of it because I'm like, he's awesome at it. He really understands it. He can do creative things that I've never seen done before. He brings something new to it. That's not my thing. So if you like fantasy, you can do fantasy. You don't have to learn sci-fi. And if you are going to learn sci-fi, do a fantasy style of sci-fi. You know, like do something that feels like fantasy. You know, there's so many different kinds of fantasy and sci-fi. Like when you say you have to learn sci-fi, what does that even mean? There's so many genres of it. Hey, man. Hey. Yeah. So what happened? I was just talking about someone said, um, I like fantasy, but I feel like I have to learn sci-fi or I'm putting myself in a box. And I was talking about how that's never how you should think about it. Nah. Don't force yourself to learn things. Like, you know, know how to do them if you have to do a job. But, like, don't force yourself to do stuff you don't inherently enjoy just because you feel like you have to. You can just be a really great fantasy artist and not do sci-fi. There's so many artists that do that. You know when you go pee, except, oh, the Twitch police is here? Who's that Twitch monkey police. on strike? What's that mean? Who are you? What's up? Twitch staff. Well, welcome. I'm about to say something pretty gross. Um, <laughs> sometimes you sit on the toilet and you, like I'm like, well, let's take a risk here. I might have to poop, right? So I sit down on the toilet and I'm peeing. I don't poop. But, you know, I'm curious. So I wipe little bit of poop on there I've been sitting in this chair drawing this skeleton mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for a long time mm -hmm. all the while a little bit of poop in my pants you've been eating too many almonds again no not like that not leakage okay. I'm talking about right. just like debris just a little bit of debris just hey, a little man, bit you know, of debris sometimes you gotta take a security wipe you gotta know where you're at no I wiped before dude I didn't like just let it ride, you know. I didn't it's expect nice. it to be clean and then go I respect it. what you're saying, but only one of us has poop in his pants right now. I don't have poop in my pants. That's what I'm talking about, man. That's what I'm saying right now. I cleaned it up. What do you guys think of the Spielberg Ready Player One art contest? Do you think it's a big exploit of young artists or a good, legit contest? I don't know anything about that. If you could tell me in the chat so I don't have to ignore questions and go look it up, that'd be great. Uh, right off the bat, I'm going to assume it's a contest that doesn't pay anyone anything, and the people that win get their art in the movie. That's my guess, because that's usually how those go. And if that is the case, then the answer is it's really up to you. If you want exposure in a Spielberg movie and you think lots of people are going to see your work if you rank high in the contest, then yeah, maybe it's worth taking a hit to do it for free. However, if you're more principled and you think that no one should do anything for free and that you deserve to be paid, then it's not a contest for you. And it's that simple. Oh, right, yeah. Stuff for contests? Is that what yeah. we're talking about? I, I, yeah, I haven't looked up this particular <laughs> contest. Yeah, I don't know. That stuff's always funny to me. They're like, if you win, we'll use your artwork in the movie. And you'll yeah. see your stuff up on the big screen, and you yeah. won't get paid for any of it. It's like, hell First yeah! Party with us at the Mandarin Theater. Yeah, sign me up. I want to lose some money. Boom. Yeah. Give me that. I'll work yeah. all day, all night. Give me a t-shirt. <laughs> it's really just like, if that's what you want to do, and you, you want that Spielberg exposure, and you think it's worth taking a hit, then okay. If you don't, then you don't. 
People in the chat, calm down. I didn't shit my pants. <laughs> it was just a little bit. And it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like a big piece. I would have felt a big piece. I don't care if you're eating either. You know what? You shouldn't be eating and watching this. How about the that? Where he used his debris. Debris. There that's you right. Go. I mean, like, that's what I was saying, uh, Mozzie, is like, if you're going to do sci-fi and you think you have to do it, even though you only enjoy fantasy, find a fantasy way to do sci-fi, like Star Wars or something. Find a way to not make it just boring clinical sci-fi that looks like all the other sci-fi we see on the internet because you feel like it has to look that way or else why would it all look that way? So many people get into that thing where it's like, well, everything looks the same, so my stuff has to look the same because there must be a reason it all looks the same, right? This must be what people are hiring for. There, you know, it couldn't just be a coincidence that everything looks exactly the same. It mm -hmm. is a coincidence. Do something fresh with it, and you'll stand out, and you'll get more jobs as a result. Hey, I have something. Question for Monkey on Strike in the chat. You're a, okay. you're a Twitch staffer. We don't know what we're doing. What can we do to improve? I'll wait. I don't know. He doesn't know what we're doing? No, I'm, I'm saying we don't know what we're doing. Oh, okay. Got it. We How don't can know. We improve? What what are we not doing that we should be doing on a channel like Twitch. this? Like if you How were to Twitch? if you were to browse your eyes around the screen, like what would be the thing that you were like, oh this is kinda shitty? How do we twitch better? Yeah, how do we twitch better? I've been twitching for a couple days. I don't know anything yeah. about it. I've been streaming. I have a little shit in my pants and I'm just wondering if you can give me some help. Yeah. Look us up. Desperate here. We need that views, we need that like money. We need to get our likes all the way up to the top. Right, so Dan? in the Ready Player One contest, <laughs> if your art wins, your avatar gets in the movie and you win $1,000? That doesn't seem like much. That's weird. That's a weird contest. I have to look this up later. That sounds really strange. The schedule with regular broadcasts would help. Damn, but we don't have time for that. Monkey on strike, we live a crazy life. We're working all the time. We just come on when we can. God damn it, Dan, we don't have a schedule. Oh shit, gotta make a schedule. Nobody's gonna like us on Facebook. Is this on Facebook? Are we on like, Facebook right now? Like, subscribe. Oh my god, I don't think people get can even subscribe to this. So wait, actually, um, Monkey on Strike, if you're listening, because you're, you're Twitch, you are Twitch, um, how do we make it so we can give people avatars and stuff, and the, like, you know, the emoticons in the chat, like the custom ones? Yeah, do you have to like set a up, Steve one. Do you have to set up subscriptions? Like, um, I'm Daniel Warren in the chat. I'm going to post all my easy allies ones. How do, we, how do we get these? How do we set it up so we can make this kind of stuff? Because that would be cool. Sorry to use you like this. Putting you on the spot, man. You shouldn't have come here. <laughs> shouldn't have advertised. Should have gone on to your other username. When I meet lawyers in public, I ask them about the law, too. Me, too. Yeah. Uh, excuse me. Can I, uh, do you work here? Is this the law office? Hey. Am I going to go to jail soon? You have to be partnered. Okay. How the hell do you get partnered? I have Damn. no idea. That's why, I'm asking. Get partnered. That's why I'm asking you, monkey on strike. We gotta get partnered. If we're not, we get partnered. Apply for partnership. Apply for partnership. Oh, Can't you just approve us, monkey on strike? I'm 21. I'm. I got. I'm a good. I'm. I'm all right. You know what I mean. I'm not perfect. But, uh. Damn, I already told you I shit myself. There goes my application. I, I can't tell you I'm a good guy and I shit my pants. Forget I'm going to apply for the partnership because I've got clean pants. I haven't shit there myself in literally, literally two years. It's been a long there time. There we go. So. There we go. He hasn't shit himself in two years. I shit myself in a Best Buy when I was uh, 18. I went up yeah. to a guy. I went up to a guy and I was going to ask him... Uh, <laughs> what was I going to ask him? I was going to ask him where a game was or something like that. I went... Hey man, do you know where? And then I farted and I shit myself, and <laughs> and I just stopped talking and I I stared at him 
And then I walked out of the Best Buy and I went to the bathroom. I threw my underwear away. I had a hole in my pants where oh. my ass is. And then I just left the mall. I just left. I went home. It was so dark. Where else are you going to go? It was so dark. All right, we don't accept. We didn't even know we could accept donations. No, I we just, don't accept it. I don't know. Donations for what? For streaming? I've been doing this forever. Yeah, we can set up a, apparently, we can set up a donation box on this, and people can just give us tips for, for being web boys. We've only done, like, four streams. We don't have... Yeah. We gotta get partnered, man. We gotta fast track this partnership. Damn, man. Make cash. You Monkey make cash strike. with the partnership? Well, you can strike. Thank you for the info. I've archived your web zone URL. I'll Dude, check it out that, later. You I'm get that URL carved, Kai? What do you say? Don't worry about it. I got it saved. Sick, man. <laughs> I love Twitch. Let me just say that. So my application should be solid. Big fan. Only use it a couple of times. I don't watch it. Big, huge well, fan. Two hundred viewers at least. Well, we're at two thirty-two. So partner me up. Yeah, there we go. Partnered, for real. A partner. Yeah. I've submitted my paperwork to the Bureau of Partnership. Uh, does anyone have any questions about stuff? We'll answer anything. Um, you know, art or comic related is fine. Uh, not related to that, also fine. We we're here to talk and have a good time. Hey! Our books are at Amazon. What? There you go. Hell yeah! Books are at Amazon, they're gonna ship, people are gonna get their books, they're gonna read them, and whatever we have to do extra, like pay thousands of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> If anybody doesn't know about that, we found out that like the uh, international shipping was going to cost way more money than we thought. Hilarious. So, I guess oversight. we just have to absorb the cost, obviously. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's what we're doing. We're just going to take the hit. It was an extra like 20 something thousand dollars yeah. that we didn't really have. It was a teacher's salary. <laughs> yeah, we had to pay a teacher's salary in shipping. And we were like, what, dog? Is that how much it costs? Is that it? Oh, I got $20,000. You want it? Sure, so just take it. Interested, anyone interested, if you're ever going to make a book and list it with Amazon or sell it with Amazon, if it's being sold on Amazon, which means that you can go on Amazon.com and buy the book, Amazon gets a 30% cut of your sales, but the international shipping is the same as domestic. If you do what we did, this is where they told us the wrong information because they thought we were listing the book on the site or not. If you do what we did and you don't list the site and they don't get their 30% cut, the international shipping goes up from $3 to 18 <laughs> Yeah, that, whatever that gap is, boom. That's a solid gap. I jumped that gap. I've jumped bigger gaps on my skateboard. <laughs> Crushes, man. 20000 bucks. yeah, sure. That's a big difference, but I got the money. Sure. Not enough to last for the rest of the year. <laughs> Yo. There but we're go. but we're solid. I'm just kidding. We're okay. But it was really stupid. It was like, oh my god, how did we not know this? <laughs> like, how did we yeah. not know this? How did they give us the wrong information and we never questioned it? Whoops. Like, please just run me over. Seeing for some. Okay, looking for some questions here. Uh. Oh, what's your biggest tip on getting better week by week or month by month? It's basically figuring out the stuff you need to work on and then pacing it out over a period of time so you can gradually get better at it. It's basically like look at a big problem and divide it into smaller parts and tackle those parts consistently. Do studies from life, you know, do if you really weak with anatomy, do anatomy studies consistently and don't look at the problems as huge instrumental problems. Just break them down into things you can spread across a schedule and get better at gradually. Because you'll you'll get way more done if you look at them incrementally than as one huge thing. Um, what's the best sandwich we've ever had? Chicken parm. I mean, Next question. Chicken parm. Yeah, I like the the chicken pesto with the roasted red peppers and the the, the cheese is a good one. Those are good. Uh, Wait, plug, plug time. I live in Denver, so 
Anybody else who lives in Denver, if you're not eating at Snarf's, which is a great name, it's not stupid at all. If you're not eating at Snarf's and eating some delicious sandwiches, you're missing out because their sandwiches are nuts. They're so freaking good. Did you take me to Snarf's? I did take you to Snarf's, but all you got was like meat and cheese and bread. So you missed out on the sandwich entirely because you can't eat the mayo or whatever and stuff oh, like that. Oh, yeah, right. So Dan missed oh, out yeah, on yeah. that. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember Snarf's. Snarf's was good. Yeah, 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 right. That was right after the airport, right. Incredible sandwiches since we're on the sandwich topic. The best. Better than Snarf's is that coffee across the street. Oh, Kaladi coffee. Holy shit, that's if the best you... coffee I've ever had. If you... Uh... I don't no, know. that was that was some of the best coffee I've ever had. That was unbelievably good. The other place is really good too. There's a place here called Corvus, which is great. That one's really good. But, What's the uh, one we worked at? Was that Kaladi? Um, yeah, that's the one that we hung out at. That's Kaladi. Yeah, yeah, super good. Kaladi cream or Venetian cream. There you go. There's some suggestions. Some suggestions. Yeah, they're pretty good. I'm in Denver too. See the shoe thief knows. Yeah. You know what we're talking hey, about. Dave, do you preserve your line art or do you keep it on a, like, do you, do you preserve it on a lower layer or do you just paint on top of it and force yourself to commit questions from the chat? Uh, this one, I'm just painting on top of it. Um, so the liner is on its own layer? I, I guess it is, yeah. I mean, I okay. did, okay, let me go back in time and I'll just show you. Scroll so the if we go back to here, I sketched with black and white, right? Like switching back and forth between black and white. I don't use the eraser. I just press X and it'll switch between these two colors over here. You know, like the two back and whatever, foreground, background colors in Photoshop. I flip back and forth between those and then I turn this sketch layer into a multiply layer, which means that the colors underneath will just kind of sit underneath it. So like if I turned it into a normal layer, it looked like this. So you can see all the places I erased. So I turn it into a multiply, and then underneath that, I do a fill of all of the, you know, the base color, whatever, of Steve. And then I do, uh, I turn that into like a layer mask, basically. And then I just go over that and add some things. This shadow layer is the secondary color. So pretty much like the background is like that warm glow so in the same way that if the sunlight's hitting you the thing that's in shadow if you're outside will be the secondary light of like the sky or whatever the sun's reflecting on around you or if there's some other second light that's not as powerful as the sun you know all that stuff so that's why that color is warm and that is set to a multiply layer so if i made it into a normal layer it'd look like this if you make it into a multiply layer it kind of sits on top of it and affects it all as a shadow with the values makes the values a little darker okay after that, I do like a selective color thing here. You can hardly tell that anything's changing, but I'm basically making it so the blacks aren't black. So I do selective color layer and I adjust the neutral colors, uh, colors and the blacks to being a little more yellow and whatever, like the, uh, the warmth in the background, that color in the background. And then I just start painting on top by selecting the, uh, the colors that I already have been place. I don't bring in any new colors to this. So I'm just using the colors that are already there and blending between them to fill out the forms. And then I just do more of that, more adjustment layers to adjust the colors. And then I just start painting and that's where I'm at here. I'm just rendering with a soft round brush, pretty small, the same way that I showed you that I was doing with like that idea of the circle with the lines around it. And there you go. Done. That's everything. Reminder threat. Is there a certain age where it would be real hard to get into concept art if you are totally fresh and have to compete with all the young blood? Like the 90, answer isn't about... Yeah, it's not really age. It's more about responsibilities. Like, um, you could be 42 and have nothing going on and have plenty of time to get into art. Or you could be 42 and have three kids and a job and, like, you know, a mortgage. And then it's significantly less time to get into art because you have so much other stuff to do it's never too late to get into it it's just a it's how long is it going to take for you to get there the less you have going on the more time you can put into it the faster you're going to be able to start working in it the less time you have the less time you're able to put into it the longer it's going to take to get into it 
And it just depends so, also how much you want it. It's like exactly. you know, somebody who is in, like, I know people like, uh, you know, like family that has kids and all that stuff. And then they end up, you know, they still go to college and they still like get their degree and like, you know, have like basically like master's stuff. And it's like, yeah, you know, that was really hard, but they wanted it. They wanted it bad enough to do it. So it's like, if you really want something and you're willing to work really hard, then you can do it. But if it's too difficult, it's not something you're super serious about. Obviously, it's going to take a little bit longer, you know. Yeah. It's just, it's your dedication level, what you can dedicate, what you're willing to dedicate. You know, all that factors into it. Are we going to be at any events in the future so you could meet us? Uh, I'll be at New York Comic Con this year, but I don't know. I'll, I'm just going to be there walking one around. One at the table. Yeah, one at the table. Um, are you doing LondoCon again? I'm not doing anything. Okay. Yeah, we're not really doing anything this year. Maybe next year. Yeah, next year we're going to be again doing that stuff because we'll be able to promote things like Steve. Yeah. Um, but this time, like, honestly, we didn't do anything like last year and we'll in this year because this year we've been doing Steve like getting everything together and yeah. last year we were doing Steve you know trying to build it up and there was kind of no point in promoting it at least that's what we thought back then because we we were like just struggling to get everything done yeah the reality of cons is that they're so expensive to go to now that if you don't have something to sell to make back that cost it's kind of not worth getting a table so like we didn't have Steve books to sell. We didn't. No one really knew who Steve was because the book hadn't been kickstarted yet. So there was no point in making a poster. Like so, we we couldn't really justify doing the event. So now that it's more of a thing, we can probably start doing that stuff in the future. Yeah, we want to do that stuff. We just need product to sell. We need something to sell. Mike O eighty six says, Dan, did you finish Dark Souls three? I started Bloodborne about a month ago. Congratulations, Bloodborne's amazing. You're gonna love it. I did finish Dark Souls three. Also great. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Snarfs. Man, I am so sick of that little kid. Just, Tell Dave's girlfriend to get you Vietnamese drown. coffee. You will get addicted. Have I ever had? I don't think I've ever had Vietnamese coffee. Let me just say this. Like, okay, Vietnamese coffee, great. Here's the problem with it. They use that like um, heavy cream. Oh, like in Thai like ice the cream. can, the can cream. Yeah, that like super condensed sweet stuff. Yeah, condensed milk. It's mm -hmm. too much. It's like. Like, I know that me and you are not cream boys. We can't really, like... No. We can't suck yeah. down cream like that. No. Sucking it's, down cream is the fastest way to end my night. Yeah, like, we'll be on the toilet forever, so... <laughs> yeah. For us, that iced coffee just isn't an option. Like, I've been out to dinner with her whole family at Vietnamese places, and I'm like, you know what? Let's roll the dice. Maybe tonight's one of those nights where I can just drink cream. Never is that night. Never. It's never been that night. I'll never be that night. I do that, and then I just end up... I can't leave the restaurant. I just live there. Mm. I set up shop. It's like I just can't leave the restaurant after that. It's so hard to get in a car and drive on a bumpy road. Yeah. Nightmare. So it's good, but it's you good. have to, like, live in a space and, like, be in a bubble and never leave. You have to just, like, float in a space. Like, you can't move. You can't hit a bump. Like, if you, like, if you took a step down a stair, it'd be over. That night is gone. Your belly shook. Welcome to hell. The night is gone. Your belly shook. Ominous. Permissilor <laughs> suggestion. Dave, can you show how you do some of your textures? In your finished illustrations, you have this really nice, sharp little details and scratches, like you've used the sharpen tool or something. Wait, can I address this real quick before you get yeah. into that? Go ahead. He says, what the fuck, man? Now I mean real Vietnamese black coffee. Every time I get it, it's pre it has like it's almost pre-creamed and i always get the iced coffee uh i've had it straight black it is a lot creamier it's like the bali coffee remember that oh yeah right it is right. pretty good it is yeah if it's like the bali coffee then i've i've had that i mean that was it's, really good it's super close to that it's pretty much the same thing okay we went to indonesia for a workshop and um we stayed at a place and like they had that coffee and it was really good. But uh, yeah. yeah, 
yeah, the other way is the cream way. So here you go. Solar would like to know how you do your textures because they're assuming you use the sharpen tool. Um, I mean, at the end, I'll use the sharpen tool, but for now, I'm just going in and, and drawing. Like everything I've done so far, for the most part, has been with the soft round brush, and I don't really do anything else. I don't know. You know, whatever. It is what it is. 200 people watching about Dave's cream troubles. I guess, yeah. I dream of creaming. Someone we came said, out with a bunch of stuff last night for cool ideas for things. Yeah. You, I was going to tell people that you were going to do that. Do what? You're doing that. When is that thing? When's your, uh, your like challenge thing? Oh, uh, I don't know. I got to ask them. We used to do uh, Crimson Daggers back in the day when me and Dave were doing it. We had these things called blood sports that were like challenges. And um, to help people get the idea was that if you did them all, you'd have a usable portfolio to get into the entertainment industry. And um, that worked and it was fun. And then we had to stop doing Crimson Daggers because we got too busy. We started making the books and stuff. And uh, there's a new group that's doing something they're calling Crimson Crucible in the old Daggers group. And um, they wanted me to come on and be a judge for a one-page comic contest. And I agreed to do that. Uh, last night, we just came up with some random titles to use for that. And, uh, yeah. So I, I'm not sure when that challenge is. Um, but you can search Crimson Crucible if you want to check it out. Uh, but, yeah. I'm just saying we came up with some solid ideas. Solid we ideas. We did. Looking good in other lives. How does he have ears if it's a skull? Ask Radi Radiaton. Radi Rolling suspension of disbelief. Um, I mean, that's a good it's question. Fantasy. It's high fantasy. How do dragons talk and read books? Well, that's they have eyes and lips. It's so, not a it's not a dragon if it doesn't have lips. People lips. I want a dragon with a solid set of people lips, and. Yeah. I want to know that it wears glasses and reads old books. That's my favorite, my favorite kind of dragon lore. Very kind of dragon. Favorite, absolute. Question from Dinosaur. Uh, since you guys are pretty hardcore, do you see a video game of some sort in your future, way down the line or whatever, like an RPG or side-scroller? I don't know how hardcore we are, but uh, I would uh, love well, to. Dan, I'm hardcore. Trying to be humble, Dave. I don't want to say how hardcore we are because it's not, you know. Have you seen me, Blade? It's not hardcore to say you're hardcore. It's hardcore to let other people tell you you're hardcore. I can drink a lot of beers. <laughs> 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 no, I'd love to work on a game. Uh, we've had a ton of ideas for stuff we want to do with Steve that I won't get into just because if we do end up doing them uh, sometime in the near future, I want them to be a surprise, but... Uh, I would love to do that kind of stuff. Uh, back when we were thinking we were ready to do Skull and Shark and found out we weren't ready to do it, uh, Dave even did some mock-up shots for what we thought a Skull and Shark video game would look like. That's kind of like right. Streets of Rage 2. Um, Skull and Shark is very much based on certain video games, like the structure of it. And uh, we always wanted to keep the idea open to like it would be cool if eventually this could be a game because so much of it comes from games but same thing with Steve I mean I'd love to do a Steve RPG I'd love to do a dungeon crawler I mean um, yeah that'd all be great we just don't know any programmers if you're listening to this or watching on demand and you're a programmer who likes making video games reach out love but to talk to I understand you. that we don't have time yet we don't have time yet but so, ignore what Dan just said don't ignore it. Just keep it in your back pocket. Mm. Need to start learning, learning how to meet programmers. I was gonna say restraint. No. Don't talk about this stuff. Uh, Twitch. I didn't know Twitch had a con. Twitch has a con. I didn't what know happens it. at it? I guess you just meet people from your favorite Twitch shows. What? Maybe. I'm guessing, I'm guessing it's like when podcasts have cons. Here's the thing I think is weird, and I'm not criticizing anybody because, again, me and Dan, we're not really, 
We don't know anything about Twitch. We're just here. Mm -hmm. um, is the whole, like, webcam thing while you're drawing, like, a thing? Is that, like... Like, do, are pe do people do that because people on, like, YouTube do it for, like, spook spook uh, video game channels or whatever? Is yeah, that why it exists? Or, or do people actually of, like that? It's having a cam on while you do a painting a result of PewDiePie. Yeah, like, I don't really understand that. Like, I don't personally why do you wanna, ever want to do that, but I'm just curious. Is it is it because you just want to watch the person talk to you and see their face when they say words? Or, like, what is it? Because I, I, I would never want to do that. I just want to know the appeal of it. Like, do you like that stuff? Not that we're gonna yeah, do yeah. it, but I'm just curious. Or like, if you do like it, could you explain it? Like, what about it is cool? Because I don't really watch streams, so I've just seen it a couple of times, but I've never actually like sat there and watched it. Do you guys like spicy food? Or does that also factor into your poop issues? I'm starting to learn to like spicy food. Dave's way farther down that road than me. Oh, I'm like... You told I me love last month, spicy food. Yeah, you told me last month you can't eat stuff anymore unless it's spicy or it doesn't feel right. Uh, I mean, that's not true. I can eat stuff, but... I like, uh... I don't know. Like, Vietnamese food's pretty spicy sometimes. Um, I like all that. I like, you know, really spicy Mexican food. You know, it's just so much flavor. What are you gonna do? Just suck it up. Suck up all that spice, get it down my throat. My throat's so tight, I can't suck that much down. But when I do get some, <laughs> sorry. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I couldn't make it through that. Um, I'm just saying I have a tight throat and spice helps loosen it up. Gets it warm and hot. Get some there you go. dripping down there, you know what I mean? Widen that throat up. Uh, what are people saying? Dave and Dan, I'm just relate to oh. you. Shut up, no one. <laughs> Are you about the Twitch thing and the cameras? Yeah, I was just reading some of them. I don't know. The point is to relate to you. Yeah, I get that. I don't know. Another portfolio question. After learning art for about a year now, I think I'm ready to make a portfolio, but I don't know where to start. Uh. Or if I should do fan art and stuff like that. Any tips? Well, I mean, again, there's different kinds of portfolios. Fan art definitely will help you get seen on social media and shared around and stuff. Um, but you also need to have some like meat in your portfolio that's like your own ideas. So when people do go look at your site after they see your fan art, there's more to you than just that. But yeah, it's more about what you want to do. Like, what's the purpose of your portfolio? What kind of jobs do you want to get? What do you want to do? Do you want to work on games, movies, comics, like toys? What do you? What What is the thing you're going to lean towards? RPGs. And then you can kind of tailor your portfolio around where you're trying to go. So run with GZ at the end it says. It helps if you are shredded as fuck and have a physique of the gods, then a cam is a must. Hmm, I don't know. I guess we're going to have to do it then. We're going to have to do it. We're going to have to do it shirtless. We're going to have to do it, uh, what, painting with tones? Tone, I don't know. Uh, tone study? T yeah, like, uh, tone I don't study. know. What could be a good one? Ripped. Uh... uh... Yeah, we'll think of something. Yeah. Something's gonna come up. Juicing with the boys. Mmm. Gems and daggers. Oh yeah, gems and daggers. That's what it was. Gems and daggers. That'll be the new one. Where we're both meat meat guys. If I miss some questions, guys, you can just repost them. The chat's going a little quick, and I'm a little behind because I'm trying to find all of them. But if I miss one, I'm sorry. Just repost it. I haven't painted like this in so long. It's there weird because I've just been drawing. I, I like just been drawing the Steve kind of stuff. I mean, you don't really forget this. I think this is, for me in particular, I think this is easier for me 
because it's so mindless. You kind of just like, once I get into a groove of painting kind of like realistically or just rendering the forms, it's like I just fall into it and zone out. It's pretty nice. It's kind of relaxing. I forgot that it was relaxing. Uh, Vortex PD, we will definitely check out a Twitch partnership. We are very busy with Amazon stuff right now, but maybe in like a week or two, we can check out how to do a Twitch partnership. First we've heard about it was today, so we're, we're very new to that, but uh, I love the idea of getting some emoticons. Uh, Mozzie asks, can we have a cream stream if you do face cam? Of course we can do that. Yeah, we can do that. <laughs> we, can we, can do both, we can both chug a thing of heavy cream and see who has to leave first. Yeah, we can do that. There you go. Yeah, we'll, we'll do a heavy cream stream. Lit, the only lich on Twitch. The only lich on Twitch. There you go. If we were a normal channel. Lich. Lich. Dot like that stuff. Lich. TV. Yeah, know. <laughs> lich. If we, were, if we were shameless. The only lich on Twitch. <laughs> hey, join me. My name's Dave Raposin with my friend Dan Warren. We can just rip off Game Grumps. We can We're going to teach you how to do it. We can do, he's a lich, and he's on Twitch. It is a Twitch lich, and then we'll get sued. <laughs> but... hey, let me tell you the amount of interest I have in that. All of it. It's pretty high, right? I put all my money on black. Yeah, I'm all in. Uh, I don't know. That sounds risky. Let's do it. I like that kind of stuff. I like branding. Um, I like business. I like marketing. <laughs> I like uh, business. Let's just say I'm a business kind of guy. I'm not a businessman. I'm a business man. Some little Jay-Z quote for you. Um, I sometimes see. get a little bit upset because when I see all these artists doing cool stuff, there are so many of them now. I don't know how I can really stand out and do something new and different. Or how do you market like concept illustration to normal people? Like you said, what do you think? Don't go into it thinking you have to do something new and different. Don't set up that artificial pressure on yourself that if you're not doing something totally new and unique, you're not worth. It's not worth your time. That's you're gonna stop before you even start if you go into it that way. Just do something that you think is fun, that's focused on what you're interested in, that comes naturally to you, and follow that. And I guarantee whatever spin you put on that thing, because you're invested in it and you enjoy it, will be slightly different enough from other people that are doing it that you will stand out on the merits of it. Don't go into this thinking that you have to do something totally unique. You have to do something that's never been done before because it will stagnate you. You will hate the work. It will stress you out. You'll figure that stuff out later in a natural way. The most important thing is that you start and you just start doing the work. That's funny that Brendan says you remind me of the art versions of Tenacious D because me and Dan's favorite comedian is Jack Black. Are we lying? Are we telling the truth? No, we're, we're lying not. right now. <laughs> <laughs> we're lying right yeah. now. I'm lying. Whoa, Twitch can approach you about a partnership? If you don't approach them, we gotta hold out. We gotta have all the power in this situation. Wait a second, we can have the leverage in this situation? That's what Mr. Creep just said. Twitch will approach you if you don't approach the... We gotta hold... I'm not making the first move. Never well, call Monkey, the girl Monkey on Twitch. strike, are you still in here? Because he sent us a message. Don't ask him. Don't ask him. Ignore his message for three days. Make him want it. Oh, that's Make a him good technique. Make him wonder what's wrong with him that we didn't respond right away. Make him question his self worth. Then when we actually do respond, he's gonna be so he's gonna be salivating. To respond. Oh, we should try doing negging to him. <laughs> yeah, Twitch is pretty good, but have mm. you seen YouTube? I don't know. I like their partnership program better. The ad revenue you can make, it's pretty good. Twitch is all right. It's kind of yeah, lame Twitch though, is isn't good. it? For the, you know, baseline all, you know. I mean, it's not like I don't like nerd shit. I kind of like nerd shit. So Twitch is something I'm a little interested in. At Overwatch, who plays that kind of shit? Who has time for that? I'm a grown-up. I'm thinking about kids. What do you do? I'm a grown-up. I'm thinking about kids. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong way to phrase that. Perfect way to phrase it. I just think about them. I don't want them. Hmm. 
Those are two different things, Dan, and one of them I'm going to get in a lot of trouble for it. Don't check my Google search history. Definitely. Definitely Black flags. Mm -hmm. Oh. Steve isn't cool, but look where it's gotten Dave and Dan. They get to work on something they enjoy, and it's not something that started out as hugely marketable. That's right. That's Steve true. Not cool. You guys hear that? Very true. The thing about Steve's success is that it fucking blows, really. <laughs> <laughs> like, the reason the reason it did well at all was because it's like, you know, we put it up online and we got the feedback. One of the comments we got just recently said, what is this? This is pretty gay. And Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was a great comment. It opened my eyes. I was like, you know what? You can be, you can make money and be successful and like not at the same time. Mm -hmm. Like it isn't successful, but in terms of numbers, it's successful. Does that make sense? Oh, there you go. I'm just kidding. I know Steve sucks. Dan sucks too. If I could have my way, I'd live alone on an island. You still there, Dan? I'm here. Just, looking for it. Just, just combing around. What was that? Someone give you a tip? <laughs> yeah. Someone tip you for, for <laughs> someone tip you for taking your bra. Off. Yeah, I took my bra. Off. Ding. Ding. You got some gold. Welcome right. to my stream, everybody. Uh, are there some upcoming artists you guys look forward to? That phrase is it like their movies, and I like that idea. Some like next summer, artists, there's a new artist coming out, and I can't wait to see it. I saw a little bit of them, and I thought, fuck yeah. Oh, uh, I mean, I don't know. Artists, upcoming artists we look forward to, like to check out some new shit. Uh, how do I answer this? There's all kinds of artists I'm looking forward to. I just don't know who they are yet. Yeah. Basically, yeah. I mean, I don't know how to answer that. I'll know them when I see them, I guess. Can we get a tip sound effect? Can we get a tip? Do we have tips? Yeah. If we're partnered, we can have a sound effect for when people donate that pops up on the screen with little animation. I've seen that in porn. Well, that's on Twitch, too. I don't know if Twitch did it first or porn did it yeah, first. Yeah, who did that first? Was it Twitch or porn? Did Twitch borrow that from porn? Or did porn borrow Because you that? always, like, in the in the porn, they're, like, you know, diddling each other or whatever. And then it goes, like, bling! Well, it has that, like, that like harp, sham, sheer, like, do -li 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 -li. That's that the one I'm thinking of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't make believe like, like you don't watch porn. You watch Man porn. Man All of you Arabian, watch porn. Man Arabian Nights, all of a sudden. The silence going. I don't have any Google alerts set up for this. <sighs> Can we talk about the way too much um, porn that's been coming out? Not good porn. Yeah, there's quite a bit. There's so much gross porn online right now. If you go to the websites and you just check it out, it's like the mom stuff. When did that happen? When did mom porn come out in such a big way? I'm so done with that. Stop sharing the mom porn. Stop, I what started, stop making it. I wonder what started it. People who want to have sex with their mom. <laughs> well, what was the thing that made it like an acceptable thing to turn into a... Like, when did it become a huge thing? Because it wasn't always a huge thing. I don't know. Since people had moms, I guess. I mean, like, is this a secret, I guess, that people had in their brains and then they kind of like tumbled down and slowly embraced it? Yeah, I'm wondering what caused them to all tumble down at the same time. I don't know. What was like the, the beacon that went off where they were like, oh, we can do it now? So whatever that was, take it back. Yeah, I'm not going to say any specific porn websites that show it just because <laughs> these are my personal sites and it just feels a little too... My personal sites. <laughs> these are my this sites. Is my, this is my private stash. Hey, these these are mine. I have them bookmarked. Oh, God. I'm going to get back to that page. Have you ever tried to draw porn, Dave? 
I you, been paid yeah. to draw porn. Yeah, I was gonna say you you had one of those gigs that everybody gets offered in the beginning. Yeah. Like draw my wife. She's totally not my wife. I'm lying to you. For some mm-hmm. reason, I'll explain this in case anyone doesn't know what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. When you start off in freelance and you start getting offers from private clients to Wait. do like personal jobs. Can I ahead. say this real quick? We Go should ahead. start an incest magazine called called Mommy Issues. Like oh, oh, oh. like issues issue of the nine. magazine. Issue number nine. We That's could make a lot good. of money. Yeah. Alright, go on. Copywritten. No one steal it. Yeah, we, we set it out loud, so technically it's copywritten. Timestamp it. Anyway, uh, there was a job who, as far as I can tell, was one guy who hired tons of people we knew. It was always, like, the same dude or, like, the same exact job from different dudes. Maybe he was using aliases. Oh, where he would do- yeah give you a photo it wasn't just me it wasn't just dave it was like tons of people we knew probably like 20 people all got given this job or offered this job where this guy would say i really love my wife and i want to have her painted as like a sexy pinup here's a photo of her can you put her in like a french maid outfit on like a you know next to a thing or can you put her in like you know thigh high stockings and like you know spread her legs and it was always the photo didn't look like a photo of a wife because you'd have a professionally taken photo of your wife or at least a photo you took of your wife in close quarters where it's like a clear photo of her because you oh, took it with yeah, your they're creepy photos. The photos he would give people that we knew to do these jobs were like at a distance kind of grainy. <laughs> like that's not your wife. You're just a dude who works at like a Walmart or something and you covet this girl every day and you don't know her and you're paying someone to paint like softcore porn of her. Yeah. Like it that's a real time. job. It's a real job that tons of us got offered to do. And I bet it was all from the same guy. I oh. do know for a fact that, um, I'm not going to say know, the name. I bet it was all from the same guy. It was a hundred percent from the same guy. It he was the, the same, same girl. He gave, he gave the same photo to like four or five people we knew. So like, it had to be the same guy. Yeah, so, this was like five, six years ago or something. So then actually, yeah, that's that's uh, that's so crazy to me that I'm gonna go hire artists to paint this girl I probably don't even talk to. We don't, we're not gonna be banned. We're just we're just talking about things that everybody knows. Everybody knows. That's my least favorite thing Wait. about. No, no. Here's a legit question about what? Twitch. What can get you banned on Twitch? Are there things you can't talk about on here? Are there like community rules for stuff that you can't bring up? Because we should know what those are. <laughs> Is there stuff that you can't talk about on Twitch that's not allowed? Besides just, like super obvious stuff. I just figured we were in America right now, so it didn't matter. We're not we're on the internet. The internet's not a country. Yeah. It's my land. This is my land. You can leave if you want. Uh... Well, I'm going to talk about it anyways. So, I hate that about porn stuff. My favorite thing in the world is when you talk to, like, uh, okay, I'm sure a lot of you are going to relate to this. When you talk to, like, somebody when you're, like, 18 or something, like, when you're in, like, a transition period, like a guy, you meet a guy, He's in a relationship with a girl, and he's a little insecure. And the you'll be talking about something like that. Like, let's say you're just being like, you're just joking around about porn or something like that, right? And then the girl says, well, he doesn't even watch porn. You know what I'm talking about, Dan? Mm-hmm. That is the darkest. That always made me laugh when I was a kid. I was like, you son of a bitch. Like, you humongous liar. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> like, yep. that's when I know I can't trust somebody when they can't at least admit that they do that. It's like yep. everybody in the world. Like, there are more views on porn than anything. You're talking about when a girl suggests that her guy is the one in a million who's never done it. Yeah, I don't. He doesn't watch porn. He says he just doesn't like it. He doesn't like how unromantic it is. Or if it's you're a girl the... in here and you're listening to this and you've heard that from a guy. <laughs> trust me, I'm more than enough woman for him. And it's like, it's not about that. He's an 18-year-old dude. Everything you've been told is a lie. (laughs) (laughs) 
It's just so funny to me. I love that, like, it's so uncomfortable that, like, oh, yeah. you can't just say that you do it. Like, people do way worse stuff that isn't porn. People gamble. It's like that. You get rid of money. Yeah. <laughs> like, Gambling, you lose money. Porn, see, this is the thing. Porn can't ruin your life. I guess occasionally Man. for a couple people it can, but gambling you can get dark can, with it. Gambling can destroy your life. You, you're never going to lose your house over porn. You can lose your house over gambling. It's so... It should be so much more of a stigma. I don't think girls are, are like, naive. I wouldn't I wouldn't go as far no, as to say, like, a girl is saying, dumb or something. I'm just saying that, like, guys are liars. <laughs> yeah, we're not saying women are naive. We're saying that guys lie. And it's not a girl's fault for believing someone she should believe. It's I just really the... like watching porn where it's, like, the people... I feel like they love each other. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, anyway. There you go. Just talk about real stuff, you know? That's what we're talking about. It's things that everybody does stream. every day. Just back down in the real. We're going to go up the hill and we're going to come back down. Any other questions? Any good questions? Any non good questions? Can be about art, can be about anything, can be about whatever. When working, freelance, when working freelance, how do you not masturbate all day? If you find out, <laughs> let me know. If you find out, let me know. <laughs> I'd love to know. I'd love to know how to not. How do you not masturbate all day? I mean, I yeah, guess it I depends on how you feel. Wish I knew. Wish I knew how not to. Any dating tips, guys? Be yourself. Number one. Yeah, because otherwise you're going to be pretending to be somebody for an indefinite yeah. amount of time and you're going to slowly lose your mind. Yeah. How about that VR porn? Haven't tried it. Uh, yeah. No. It seems like once you go down that road, you're just that's in a, the matrix. That's a red pill, blue pill scenario where you don't, <laughs> exactly. come, back. You don't come back. Yeah, like, you know, you just forget everything you know and then you're just in that world now and then There's it's no, over. There's certain things where once you buy them, you're a person who bought that thing forever, and you're never going to let yourself forget it. Betalicious says, Yo, Dave, at that level up hangout, you stated that watching porn is the worst thing ever if you want to become an artist. What the hell, dude? It is. Well, both are true. <laughs> you're, it acting is. Like, you're, you're acting like they're mutually exclusive. They're not. Both are true. It's inevitable and horrible, and it's, you know, it's a reality. Yes. It is you the will, worst. You will eat after you masturbate. You'll feel gross. You'll feel sleepy. You'll take a nap. You'll take a nap. Then you'll wake up and you'll still feel groggy, so you'll make some coffee. But since you took a nap at 6 p.m., then you'll be up all night. Yeah, this is freelance. This is being yeah, an, this is an artist. Cycle. And if you don't get out of that, hmm, I don't know. Porn is a lethal weapon. you got to watch out. Porn is the mind killer. Yeah. I can uh, kill with a video. Have you ever backed out from a job because of your morals? Uh, I guess. Yeah, I mean, technically. Yeah. I would say yeah. technically, yeah. Like, when people are, like, really rude or something. Or, like, if... I mean, like, there have been some jobs, I guess, where the content, I was just... I, not that, like, I didn't agree with it, but it was, like, offensive on, like, a lame level. Mm -hmm. Or I was like, this is really stupid. Like, as much as I could use the money on this, like... I don't know. I don't know if I could actually do it. Like, I don't know if I could actually do a good job on this. A card company basically told me to steal. And I was like, no. And um, they really forced it, like, go get, you know, go take stuff and put it in the cards and just do that. And I was like, I, I can't do that. And, uh, yeah, that's the only time I've ever been like, I, I really just can't do this. I can't have my name on this. Um, when are we going to have some tequila shots? I hate tequila. Me too. Tequila makes me cry. Yeah, tequila's gross. I have, like, legit nervous breakdowns when I drink tequila. Dan knows. Uh, when we were in um, London, I, oh like, God. I had tequila, and I never really drank tequila. 
and we were what like 18 19 yeah um and yeah, pretty was, much like dark yeah like we were we were pretty young we went over there and we hang out we hung out with some people that knew us from um youtube and we just like went out drinking and stuff and then i literally laid on the ground in the bathroom hugging the toilet wearing like all my american flag gear because we were in london and i was just a an idiot yeah. and i was dressed like the i was basically dressed like bruce springsteen but like yeah. even more american flags and this was like close to 9 11 so i thought it'd be funny he was, he was it wasn't down i just cried down, hugging a toilet crying harder than i've ever seen dave cry before. <laughs> crying so hard i couldn't get him to like form sentences and I think Dan, you cat, did you carry me to the cab? Yes, I, I had to. We had a flight the next morning, so we had to get back to the hotel, pack and sober up. So I carried you down three flights of stairs, got you into a taxi, and took you back to King's Cross. Now we we went into a subway because I peed in like the thing the, the area. That was that waited. was on that was on the way to Lexus House. That wasn't on the way back. Okay, that was before the crying. You were still you were drunk, but you weren't that you weren't tequila drunk. You were drunk from when we did the karaoke. Okay, right. We weren't tequila drunk yet. But yeah, then uh, yeah, we got the taxi back to King's Cross. Right. Good time. Great time. Solid time. After five or six jizzins, you're done for the day? Five or six? <laughs> six, five, or six. six. five or six jizzins? What are, you, what are you talking about? There's a world beyond three? Yeah, dude, I guess it's five or six jizzins. What kind of yoga do you do to tap into that energy? That's some dark energy. Five or six jizzins. You could look into a black hole with that kind of dark energy. I know. (laughs) It's something else. Mm -hmm. Any movies you guys have watched recently that you'd like to talk about? X-Men, Warcraft. I have no interest in seeing X-Men, really. I just don't. I don't know. Apocalypse looks dumb. I don't really care. Warcraft. I heard that movie was really bad. Yeah. Warcraft, I mean, it's going to be a... Fans of the franchise who, like, played all the games are probably going to like it regardless, but I could not watch that movie just because the... The CG characters look good in scenes where it's all CG, and the, but the humans look so bad next to them. Mm. Even not next to them, but like the Samwise armory designs from the game don't work on real people. They look really cartoony and like cost. It looks like a bunch of people doing cosplay. When I look at the trailer, I'm like, I'm watching like a fan video. Like fans made it with like you know they did a bunch of cosplay and filmed it. Like I I just can't ever see myself enjoying that movie I don't know it just it looks so cheap looks looks dope yeah uh, two guys talking who's who I'm Dave I'm Dan we kind of have like similar voices though so it's true yeah hey Dave and Dan have you had a milk stout from left hand only asking because I think Dave said he was in Colorado I have some of that in the fridge the nitro uh, milk stout, super good, super good. I really love that. Uh, if you're on the East Coast, my favorite is Kentucky Bourbon Ale. It's yeah, really Warren good. Bridge. Yeah, Dan has those. Super good. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mirrors asks, well, says some lady I met at a wedding wants me to paint her cat that died recently. I'm usually pretty good at turning jobs down, but I kind of feel bad for her. How do I say, fuck your dead cat, without really saying, fuck your dead cat? Just saying, you have to understand, uh, lady, that as much as your cat meant to you, it meant absolutely nothing to me. And therefore, I'm out. I just missed what you, what? (laughs) What? I'm out? Fuck your Yeah, Shark Tank. Oh my god. Yeah, you just have to say that you can't do it. I mean, just, just say that you can't do it. I mean, you don't have to say fuck your dead cat, but just go like, your cat's dead, sure, but it wasn't my dead cat, so like, I don't know. Like, I don't have your emotions for it. 
Ren GZ said, anyone who shits on X-Men Apocalypse, fuck them. The movie was legit awesome, my favorite one. Um, yeah, I mean, I haven't seen it. Maybe it's good. When I when I found out certain things that are in the movie, I just didn't really care. Like, I don't want to spoil it for people that haven't seen it and want to see it, so I'm not going to talk about it. But, I mean, I'll probably see it at some point when it comes out. I just didn't really care about seeing it in the theater. I liked the older ones that were more like, you know, Magneto and Xavier focused because I liked those two actors a lot, Fassbender and McAvoy. Like, First Class was cool. I liked how they changed that around. But, like, it seems like there's 25 main characters in Apocalypse, and it just feels like they're throwing everything at the movie. Yeah, I still haven't seen Civil War. Like, I haven't seen, like, anything. I liked Civil War a lot. Um, God, that fight scene in the middle of Civil War is probably the best thing they've ever put on film. I mean, Civil War's got its problems as a movie, I guess, if I had to, like, really critique it, but I, I enjoyed it. Yeah, I still gotta see it. Uh, gotta see it in the theater. I just have this weird thing where it's like, all of a sudden, I don't care about, like, anything. Like, maybe I just finally am, like, I'm becoming that guy, that like older dude who just can't do it, who doesn't I think care. A lot of it, I think a lot of it has to do with the uh, the book. Maybe. I'm having a hard time doing anything. Like I'm having a hard time getting into games. I'm having a hard time like enjoying most stuff because I just keep thinking about that in the back of my head. It's been it's taking so long to get the books out. That was a good question right in here. What is it? Well, let me just say this to Bay Delicious. We won't be going to any cons this year. Well, Dan yeah. will be at New York Comic Con. He won't have a table. Right. Sunny Boy asks, Hey guys, what was the cringiest moment in your lives? Um, that is a tough one. There are so many. I, I can just start naming some from me. What do you think? Um, I... You know, if you've heard any of the old streams, you might have heard this story, but I was exercised when I was a kid, and I don't mean that I was fat and they tried to get me to lose weight. I mean uh, that my mom thought I had the devil in me, so she brought a bunch of Christian or, like, whatever people over to my house, and they laid me on a bed, and they prayed the demons out of me because I liked Iron Maiden when I was, like, in sixth grade. That was pretty cringy, and I sat there the whole time just staring at the ceiling being like, fuck these people fuck them so hard it was like the like i was so you never have those moments where you're like embarrassed for somebody else that's what it felt like like how are all of these adults doing this to me like yeah. you guys are insane like yeah. you guys are out of this world like out of your minds that was one of the cringiest moments of my whole life i had a friend who when i was like six and he was seven he was normal and then every year progressively going forward i got older and he kind of stayed seven. Oh my god yeah and um it, it wasn't until i was about 13 that i realized that i was growing up and he wasn't and there was something something developmentally wrong with him and um i felt really bad about it for a long time because i was like I, he's he's got all these issues he's learning like challenged he can't like, I, I guess I just have to be his friend because, like, he's never going to be able to take care of himself. And he's really awkward, really strange. He just kind of stayed a child perpetually. And there's one day, probably the one of, this isn't the cringiest thing I can remember, but it's up there. Um, me and Dave came back from, like, the mall or something. Oh, shit. And, Is this the horrible part? I'm not talking about the one with okay, the okay, okay. criminal Damn. action. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't want to. I didn't want to go that dark on this. Oh, okay, because that's dark. No, that's not funny. No, that that one that one was like legit like crime. But <laughs> and, anyway, a little teaser for you. A little little, little teaser in there. Something I'm not going to talk about. Anyway, so um, we came home and uh, we heard him. He had been staying with my family that week, and uh, we heard him laughing in the basement. And um, we just stood in the kitchen and we were like, "Are there people here?" And it was like really forced fake laughter like ha 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 eh, ha, 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 ha like like forcing himself to laugh and we walked over to the stairs and he didn't know we were there and this is um, like giving we me the just, jitters just like remember yeah that? <laughs> and then all the all the lights were off it was like 8 p.m 
he was in the basement with the lights off watching TV, and I think it was like an SNL rerun. Uh, it was like one of those 90s SNL reruns with, uh, you know, like when um, Will Ferrell and them were on it. It was something like that, and he was watching it, and uh, every time there was a joke, he would do the thing, and this is the thing that makes that makes me cringe the most about it. Whenever people do the thing where they try to laugh loud, but intentionally make themselves quiet so it's not too loud, so you know it's a fake laugh. Where they go like, ha, 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 ha. Where it's like, <laughs> they're trying to do a loud laugh, but they don't want to be too loud, so they're like setting the volume in their head and figuring it out. The fakest laugh, so... He's just down there laughing to himself, going like, whoo, ha, 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 ha. And then I remember specifically the one where you winced and turned and walked away was um, someone said something, like, snarky, and he went, ooh, to the TV. Oh, no one else was down there. Yeah. Someone said something snarky to the woman in the skit, and he went, ooh, ouch. And then you, <laughs> you winced and walked away, and then I left with you, and we got in the car and left, and we didn't address it. Yeah, that was too hard. It's like yeah, that was like another world of just strange. The dude was out of his mind. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that was the answer to your question. I saw a woman poop in a trash can. I've talked about that. Um, is that even cringe or is that just you roll over and pretend it didn't happen they, I laughed I don't know pooping in the house who poops oh. in a trash can in your own house it's dope it's uh, me. that one was good uh, what's another good cringe story there's so many of them there's so many that are funny to us but if we tell them to you guys you're gonna think that they're the worst darkest horrible things in the world that's what I'm know. trying to build that's what I'm trying to filter in my head right now is like, which ones are funny to talk about because these people didn't grow up in Carver. Yo, 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 yo is funny. Oh, yo, yo. Yo, yo is like one of the cringiest things that ever happened in the whole world. So it's, two, it's the year 2000. I'm like 13 or whatever. And uh, 13, 14. I'm in the cafeteria with some people sitting at a table. We're all unpopular. We're all nerds. It's middle school. None of us are popular people. We're just sitting at a table. We're all friends because we're unilaterally unpopular. That's the only thing we have in common. One of us, his name's Tim. He's he's on one of the lower rungs. It's just how it happens. It's high school. It's what happens. He starts learning how to do yo-yo stuff because he thinks that's going to make him cool. And he Already starts bad. He starts wearing like a sideways hat and things Ooh. like that. And like, um, and he's like, just imagine the nerdiest person you've ever met, like kind of chubby, nerdy, just someone who should not have that undeserved like confidence in like middle school. And um, he walks into the cafeteria and, uh, oh God, he does like the, he has like two yo yo's and he does like the walk in the dog thing with him but he does it in like a really exaggerated way where he's like getting into it, like like a hip hop thing where he like pops his shoulders and kind of kneels a little bit. This is embarrassing just to even hear. And I can't remember if someone said yo to him and he replied or if he just said it on his own. I think someone said yo, Tim. And then he went, yo, yo. And he threw the yo <laughs> down and did the pose. That's what it was, yeah. Someone said yo, Tim, and he went, yo, yo. And, um... Yeah, I couldn't, yeah. <laughs> no. No! That oh. hurts. Nope. That's the worst. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, yo! I would have... Oh. I would have been sucked into my own body if I heard that. That story, sh just... that story should have ended with a box of milk just slamming him in the face. Like someone should have just hit him with one. But, unfortunately, that's not how it went. <sighs> Dark, dark one. Was he one of the hacky sack kids that thinks they're cool? No. The hacky sack kids where we grew up were almost all like the stoner kids. They weren't really just like the nerdy, unpopular people. They were like specifically the ones that like listened to Tool, smoked pot a lot. Like those were more the hacky sack people. Yeah. Yeah, they were all uh, just like stoner kids with parachute pants. Yeah. 
<laughs> Tiger Skull Call says, yo, yo is a pretty good line while walking the dog, though. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta give him credit there. That's true. All right, I take it back. Cool story. Uh, uh, and also the fight with the nunchucks is cringy. That's the that's a common oh. story on the streams from a while ago. Yeah. Uh, this kid Brian got challenged. Uh, well, he didn't get challenged. He he challenged a kid to a fight. You know, these kids were making fun of him and. He was like, "Oh, I'm, I'm, I'll fuck you up," and like talking tough and everything. And uh, they ended up agreeing to fight in the baseball field uh, after school one day. And um, it was going to be like a one-on-one -on -one thing. It was going to be Brian versus this kid, and they were going to fight. And we all knew this kid was going to destroy Brian. Like we were just like, "Okay." And that's this why everybody showed up. That's why that's why like a hundred kids showed up to the baseball field to watch this fight happen. So a little backstory about Brian. He was one of those kids that wore, like, jeans with a denim jacket and a bandana and had a ponytail and would wear, like, necklaces from, like, Renaissance fairs of, like, pentacles and stuff. You're just your all-around badass. <laughs> <laughs> basically, it's basically what I'm... Just your all-around badass dude is basically what I'm getting at. <laughs> so anyway, uh, you know, so he shows up and uh, he goes to the fight and the kids there and they're like shit talking to each other and everyone's watching and when the kid walks up to fight him Brian walks up and he opens up one side of his denim jacket and on the inside of the denim jacket is a custom sewn in leather pocket that he has sewn into the jacket to hide things so he's standing there he's in a bandana he's got a ponytail he's got the like kind of cool renaissance fair necklace um, you know, the jeans, like, you know, all around, again, badass, badass dude. Opens up the denim jacket, pulls out a pair of nunchucks, and drops the one half of the nunchuck so it's hanging at his side, and then he closes his jacket and he starts spinning the nunchuck around in front of him. Everybody starts laughing their ass off, and then because he basically pulled a weapon at a fight, uh, like four of the other dude's friends walked out with him and just beat the shit out of him. Hmm. That's what happens. You can't bring nunchucks to a fist fight. You're gonna get beat up by everyone else. Yeah. Uh, we all sat there there's the uh, there's the alert about this story. There you go. Yeah. Too many. Uh, he's a uh, he's probably one of the best parts of where we grew up. I mean, yes. Yeah. I mean, there's so many cringy things, but that's just a just a taste of the cringe. Small test. And this all happened, what, 2000s, right? Yeah. Yeah, like late 90s, early 2000s. Yeah. Yeah, early 2000s, because we were in middle school in 2000. I remember that year when The Matrix came out and I was in sixth grade. Oh, do you remember when, um, you know, at the mall, the two Neos making out? Oh, I can't even think about that. But yes, I remember. Imagine a kid in a leather trench coat from the Matrix with the Matrix sunglasses who slicks his hair back with hair gel and a girl who's wearing the same coat with sunglasses whose hair is dyed purple uh, making out with each other in front of an arcade. Just two Neos. Just two Neos making out in front of an arcade at the mall, being the coolest people in the world. I think that's where, like, I don't know, self-awareness comes from, seeing all those other people. Yeah. And you just go, man, I hope I'm not that. <laughs> I it's hope tough. nobody thinks I'm that. It's tough to see that and then scan through all the things you've done in your life and try to see if any of them line up. Yeah. Does do people secretly know I stuff about know. me that I'm an idiot? Oh. Any fun experiences with drugs? Me and Dave have never done any drugs. Nah. Sorry. It's a boring it. We've both drank alcohol, but we've never done any drugs. Yeah, we like... Because we, we grew up in a town where everybody else was doing them, and we just kind of saw how lame it got, so we just never did it. Basically. Drugs were, like, everywhere. Yeah. 
I've never even smoked pot. Like, nothing. Literally nothing. That's why we're so boring. Yeah. We have some wild experiences where we get fucked up, hopped up on pills, and we go out and kill a homeless guy. Hell yeah, do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we used to brag about it too, me and Dan. We used to have these cool straight edge sharpie things that we put on our hands. Did we did. I and we were I'm... like, we're skater goths. What are you? Fuck yeah. you, loser. Oh, I can talk about that. That was cringy. Let we me did... just say, I was joking there. We didn't do that. No, but he's basing <laughs> that joke on reality. Yeah, I am basing it's... it on reality. There was this kid, Brandon, who gave a speech in the cafeteria one day, and he stood... I'm literally like, this is going to be close to verbatim because I've committed it to memory. He went, you know what? I'm sick of this. What's with the rivalry? We got the goths and we got the skaters. None of us are preppy. Why do we got to be hating each other? Why do the goths hate the skaters? And why do the skaters hate the goths? You know what? I like to skateboard, but I consider myself a goth. So you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm a skater goth. I'm both, guys. I'm both. Dual wielding. Brandon, skater guy. And then he recorded videos of him doing skate tricks and he put skater goth at the bottom. Mm. Yep. Wearing those black parachute pants with the chains and system of a down t shirt with his hair dyed black doing skate tricks with slumped shoulders because he just doesn't care about life. Yeah, we, I signed him up for in tech ed class because he was so horribly obnoxious. I signed him up for every single golf magazine that ever existed. Are we quoting Roller Boys? No, we're quoting a kid named Brandon that we went to high school with. And I signed him up for the military too, and the Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We had military recruiters and I memorized his information and I just went in and I talked to the recruiter about how I was Brandon. Oh. Here's some cringe. From a couple, here's some good cringe from a couple of weeks ago. Uh, one of my friends from high school had kids, and um, having the first birthday party for for his son. And the theme of the party, you couldn't come to the party unless you observed the theme. The theme of the kid's first birthday party was polo shirts. That was the <laughs> solid theme. So all the adults had to buy polo shirts if you didn't have one, and all the kids had to wear polo shirts, and that was the theme. <laughs> and when my friend when my friend who I'll, who I'll keep nameless just in case anyone listens to this uh, contacted them and said we don't own any polo shirts so can we just come to the party they didn't respond with a sentence they sent them a link to a, an online store that sold a brand of polo shirts that was how they responded <laughs> there you go uh. and that was like two weeks ago yeah, that wasn't that long ago, was it? No, that was not that long ago. I mean, cool party idea. I want to go. Great party. What'd you say it was? Great, great theme. Polo theme? Polo themed, yeah. Fucking polo shirts. cool, dude. I not, have a... polo, not polo themed. That's like a sport. Polo I, shirt themed. I have a button-up shirt with a collar. Does that count? No, no, you gotta get a polo. Oh, shit, I don't have it. How can I celebrate that baby? This voice you're listening to right now is not Dave. I'm Dave. There you go. It is weird to choose a theme that has nothing to do with the baby. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. what does that have to do with the baby's favorite thing? Why wouldn't it be something that the baby likes? I'm trying to figure out why I hate it so much. Because it's a weird thing for you to want. Like, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm saying. Like, It's not for you. <laughs> something about it something about it feels like they're trying to say their baby is classy or something i don't know maybe i don't i really like rich or something like why polo shirts that's so specific and terrible person in the chat just reminded me of something great one of dan's family they had something similar to the polo shirt wedding theme except it was camouflage yes yeah i went to my cousin's wedding and the groom and the groomsmen were all wearing camouflage tuxedos camouflage tuxedos Boom. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh. Yep. Give me that. <laughs> Family are all rednecks. 
I wish I was there so bad. What was the line about marrying a Native American? Oh, because her folk are good with the animals. Oh! Oh, not her folk, her her kind. Her kind are good with the animals. Yeah, her kind are good with the animals. Yeah. So I went out out to Illinois, uh, to this town called Anna. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what it stands for, because I don't want to get banned on Twitch. Um, Yeah, they don't want to get banned on Twitch. So, went to the wedding. There was camouflage tuxedos. After the wedding, they had the reception in my uncle's barn, because he had the biggest barn, so you're going to have it there. And then while he was at the, while we were at the barn, I got so bored that I went out and just checked out the animals and stuff, because I could not be inside with all the square dancing and all the craziness and horribleness. So, and again, I'm not trying to offend anyone that likes that stuff. I just personally can't do it with my family, because my family's insane. Yeah. So I went out, I'm hanging out with the animals, I'm looking at the rabbits, and my uncle comes out, and um, he tells me about how he married a Native American woman, and I'm like, okay, why are you bringing that up? And he's like, yeah, you know, she's a good woman and stuff, and he says, plus, with the farm and everything, it helps because her kind is good with the animals. What do I do? Where am I? What do I... I know, okay. like, I hate that you're in that situation. I know exactly what to do in that situation. I just look around and I go, I got to get back to Massachusetts. I don't. I go, absolutely. absolutely. I know, right? Absolutely, they're better with the animals. And I'm like, yeah, of course. Lords of the plane. Planeswalkers. Um, don't do that. I hate anything camouflage when it's not needed, says Dead Air. I mean, it was needed. What if somebody saw them getting married? Yeah. Oh. Her kind. Good with the animals. What are we good with as white people? Nothing? I don't know. Killing industry, people, I guess. Just industry. Yeah. Boring stuff internet white people do some awesome stuff though there's this really good one where just gonna let that hang in the air I was reading this book and the white people figured out that in South America the rubber plant existed and they were just like man we really need these pencil erasers and they were like well what do you want to do and like well let's set up an industry down there and then they enslaved all of the Aborigine people and just wiped them out. It was like, oh my god, just for pencil erasers and stuff? Like, holy crap. Mm -hmm. It's pretty nuts. I like it. Yeah, they pretty much destroyed everything down there for that. (laughs) Yeah, like, oh my god, for rubber. Fucking rubber plants. And then you know what they did is after the rubber plants were all, you know, whatever, that industry was getting going, they took the rubber plants and they brought them to uh, one of those islands like Guam, but not Mm -hmm. Guam, I don't think. And they basically found that it was a perfect climate where they could grow it all year round without it being in the rainforest. And then they just left everything to die in South America. That's what you do. It's pretty crazy. That is what you do. It's pretty crazy. Anyone got any cool questions or subjects of conversation? Oh. Uh, yeah, so look at this Steve. I just did some Steve stuff. I was going to say, it's probably getting close to wrap-up time. Yeah, I think we've been on here for like a couple a of hours. Three, oh, yeah, what? Like, Three shit. and a half hours? Yeah, okay. Yeah, we got to wrap this up. Whoops. We, we've been on here too long. I gotta get some stuff done. We'll take, like, one more thing from chat. Yeah, if you have something you want to ask, feel we'll free. Talk about or anything, and then we gotta, gotta wrap it up. Look what we jumped up to. We're at 253 people. Hello, wow. everybody. Hey. Let me just say this. Before you guys uh, leave us forever, we make a comic book. It's called Steve Lichman. You can go to stevelichman.com. Read a whole 60-page preview. Post the actual one. That's the imager. SteveLichman.com? Yeah. It'll be in the chat. SteveLichman.com, and you can sign up for our 
uh, newsletter at the top, and we'll let you know when our next book is available and the second edition of our first book, which is... Uh, it defaults to your carbon mid. Yeah, I know. But, yeah. The, uh, the next books will be coming out this October. We'll have the Kickstarter, and then they'll ship next year in the summer, springtime. So, yeah, we'll keep we'll keep doing these streams. Um, yeah. You can follow us on here, I guess. That's how Twitch works, right? Because I'm I don't know anything about Twitch. But mm -hmm. yeah, we'll be doing these um, semi regularly, and then once all the books ship, we'll be doing them a lot more regularly. Uh, this next week is going to be a little tight, but we'll probably be on here a couple more times. Yeah, we're going to be like just keeping this pretty casual, you know, talking like stories and. How like normal people have vlogs, we'll just talk about life. <laughs> That's pretty much yeah. it. And we'll have people on sometimes, I'm sure, and we'll do other things. But for now, Ross we're just kind of starting up. What? The Bob Ross stream was hosting us? Yeah, I guess so. Oh, I cool. saw that a couple of times. Thanks. But yeah, thanks everybody for for hanging out. We'll uh, take the take the last question here about Noman University uh, okay maybe not because I don't really know much about them I don't so, either I thought Noman University was just tutorials and downloads I didn't know it was a real place I knew it was a real place but I know nothing about it at all hmm. uh, sorry yeah I've only taught there for like a workshop but outside of that I I don't know I don't know anything about the curriculum or anything, or like Wait, the reputation. But I mean, at the end of the day, with all this stuff, you can really do whatever. Like, there's so many different approaches to getting better. You don't necessarily have to do any one thing. You know, when it gets, you know, you know, it's like all you need is like tutorials if you really want to learn somebody else's technique, and then you just study on your own and you put in as much time as you can. If you need to be around other people suggest you start a group or become a part of a group on Facebook or on a forum or something if you can if you can find something there's a lot of groups out there for learning art and all that and um, yeah you can come back on here we'll also take on more questions if you have questions about stuff how to do things whatever else and then mm -hmm. um, in the future we'll definitely do paint over stuff and we'll probably set up an email address where you can submit things or something like that but oh, yeah, uh, we, uh, yeah. we save all this stuff to YouTube too. I know yeah. to go watch it. So there's a link below the video that has the YouTube, the yet tab, the YouTube archive link. So if you click that, you can watch every stream we've done. Also, I don't ever say this on anything, but you can subscribe to our channel here, and mm -hmm. we'll be on whenever. And you can also follow us on Twitter. I'm at Dave Raposa. Dan's at Daniel Warren eighty six. Yes. Our Facebook page has just Steve Lichman. You can look that up. And, Someday uh, yeah. we'll edit all the channel info to have all our social media stuff in it. We just haven't done it yet. Yeah, it'll be soon. But well, Thanks um, for hanging out. The last, yeah, last question. What artists are we going to invite to the stream in the future? We, I don't know. We like talking to tons of people. Uh, I'll probably get KK on here sometime because I yeah, love him. Yeah, Kataki be cool to get Carl on maybe or Marco or something talk about what's going on with them I'd like to start branching out and talking to people that do stuff outside of the entertainment art community that's one thing I really want to do I want to bring on like video game artists maybe like uh, like Waz from Shovel Knight maybe um, I'd love to talk to him right. uh, I'd love to branch out maybe talk to the Hyperlight Drifter people if we can get them to come on uh, yeah I, I want to I want to bring on a lot more different kinds of artists that do different kinds of things in the future but we're still starting a little slow because the books are shipping once that's all settled we will get into a more regular thing and we'll have plenty of people on yeah well love to all you guys thanks for hanging out with us we really appreciate it appreciate all the support and uh if you didn't hear it the steve lichman books are at our distributor right now and within the next few days we'll know uh when everything is shipping it should be shipping like really really soon like it could be in the next two days or yeah. even a, even a day from now like but we'll let you know we'll stream again and we'll talk about it we'll also update the kickstarter when we have definite um details and uh yeah thanks for hanging out have a good night everybody farewell 
And again, a secret message for YouTube. You can do anything you want as long as you're cool and, you know, a little bit attractive. A little bit of attraction never hurt anybody. You can become anybody you want in the whole world as long as you're attractive and very, very cool. That's all that matters. That is it. That's the end of it. I don't know if any of that's true, though. <laughs>